It's a rivalry that dates back to the late 1980s. It is the Battle of High of, of Farm to Market Road 59. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Scarborough Stadium, the oldest stadium in Anderson County for tonight's contest. It's the scouting report game of the week between the Crossroads Bobcats about seven minutes away against their local rivals in the Cayuga Wildcats. The Bobcats entering this game, dropping their district opener after winning, looking to get some redemption. This is the East Texas Benefits countdown to kickoff. We'll hear from our head writer, Nick Jordan. We'll have a Texas College student spotlight ahead of their broadcast tomorrow night and get you ready for our rivalry matchup. We're going to take a quick four-minute timeout, and when we come back, we'll get ready for our pregame show. This is a sport game of the week on the Antler Sports Network is ASN2, brought to you by Tinsley Title and Scouting Report, the official recruiting platform of the Antler Sports Network. It's Chance to Cody, and I'm the pre-owned sales manager at Maritz Chevrolet. The Maritz Promise is a lifetime warranty on the engine and transmission that's given to you at no cost. It's good for the lifetime as long as you own the vehicle. As long as the car is 10 years old or newer and has under 100,000 miles when you buy it, it's gonna come with that. It's gonna cover everything, all your lubricated parts that's part of your engine or your transmission. Come see us today at Maritz Chevrolet, home of the Maritz Promise. Not only is it gonna give you a lifetime warranty, it's gonna give you peace of mind and confidence to buy with us. My name is Nathan LeMaster, I'm from Tyler, Texas, and here I have the Pill Puncher. This device, ladies and gentlemen, will help you get into pill packages very easily, sanitarily, and effectively. All you gotta do is take the point, put the puncture the back, right there, take the device, put it over the pill, like so, punk, push it down, drops it in, to the reservoir and there you go folks. Why make this harder on yourselves? Save your fingers and get your pill puncher today. Find your support system at Texas Wesleyan. You'll get the one-on-one -on -one attention you need to succeed. Texas Wesleyan, small classes, big scholarships. Now that's smaller, smarter.
on the East Texas Benefits countdown to kickoff ahead of the Wildcats and the Bobcats in the battle of, in the battle of FM 59. It's also a 2A Division I Region 2 District 7 matchup. Both of these teams met for the very first time back in 1987. And Cayuga has won 15 times, well, has won 15 of the past 16. Last time they were able to defeat the Bobcats was last time Cayuga fell to the Bobcats was back in 2003. Ironically, that was the Bobcats' best season. But taking over the team for the past two years for the Cayuga Wildcats, it's head coach Jacob Maggie, who I had the pleasure to speak with prior to tonight's contest. All right, Coach, just moments away from kickoff. Not only is this a big game on multiple fronts, it's a big district matchup. It's a big regional matchup. Both of these teams separated by about 10 minutes of drive time. But it's also homecoming. Talk about how important this game is, not only for the community, but in the scope of the rest of your season. Uh, I, both teams being as close as we are, uh, you know, it's always a rivalry. It's always, you know, kids want to play hard. They want that bragging rights. But, you know, the, the playoff picture, you know, it's extremely important in that because somebody's going to leave here 0-2 and, and somebody's going to be 1-1. One one. So um, it's it's got uh, big implications as far as getting to season three and the playoffs is concerned. So we've got to come out and play. Now, before this, we had met earlier in the season, well into the early part of the calendar year, and we discussed kind of the camaraderie and the fellowship that's shared here in the area. And you talked about the middle mural in the field, how it gets painted differently every week. The colors get changed. What are some other things that you like about this area? Uh, you know, I, I, I like being in the country. I'm from Palestine, grew up from Palestine. Um, it's just kind of, it's just kind of home. So, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited about this. I love, I love this area. Now, of course, let's talk about the Bobcats. They got a lot of momentum rolling into this game. They're three and one. Got it to a hot start in the beginning of the season. Dropped their district opener. What do you expect from this Bobcat team? They're going to play hard. I mean, they, they're much improved, and they're going to play. So uh, we, we expect their best look. Now, as tradition, Coach, I'll end with this. First time I interview coaches on the Antler Sports Network, I ask them some kind of obscure question, and you're going to be no different. What is your go-to pregame or postgame meal? Uh, I don't eat before a game, so usually after the game, I whatever's in the refrigerator. <laughs> Whatever's in the refrigerator. What's in the fridge tonight? Uh, I don't need, I don't even know. I hope something. I hope my wife has something in there. I well, hope. Well, I bet she's hoping that you can pull out and win tonight. Coach, thank you for your time. Yes, sir. Thank you. That's the name of the business on this sheet. Name of the business? Mm -hmm. ah! Ooh, uh. Yo. Yo. Yosemite? Yosemite? Yosemite roofing. Yos, yos me. Yosemite roofing? Yose, Yose Mite. Yose Mite? Hey guys, it's Josiah with Yosemite Roofing. And we don't care what you call us, as long as you call us. My name is Anasia Jefferson. My name is Asia Brown. My name is Tashawn Johnson. And my name is Roosevelt Williams. I serve as the 2023-2024 Miss Texas College. I am the Student Government Association President. I am the current 2023-2024 Miss UNCF. I am the 23-24 National Pay and Analytics President. I am a senior majoring in social work and I'm from Jasper, Texas. I am a senior majoring in criminal justice. I am from Russ, Texas. I am a junior majoring in biology from Montgomery, Alabama. I am a junior majoring in business administration from Houston, Texas. My favorite thing about Texas college is how family oriented the college is. Everyone is somebody. You get to know your professors more on hands-on. You get to know your presidents and vice presidents. Texas college is a tight-knit community. Everyone just welcome me in. Let me know that I was home. When you first step foot onto the campus, someone, a faculty member, a janitor, even a security guard, someone will acknowledge you being here. They're gonna ask you different questions because everyone knows familiar faces. The family atmosphere, the hands-on experiences you get to have with faculty and staff, and then the multiple organizations that I've been a part of and had the chance to grow at Texas College. The opportunities afforded to me while being able to further my softball career Play Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated and become one of the campus queens Miss UNCF 2023-24. I've been able to grow here at Texas College mentally, physically, spiritually, and academically because of the opportunities. The motto here at Texas College is give the students light and they will find their way. And attending a college like Texas College, they do give you the light.
Back on the East Texas Benefits countdown to kickoff. Of course, as you may have known on the Antler Sports Network social media pages, our head writer Nick Jordan every once in a while likes to discuss some different topics spanning across the world of sports. And this week is no different. This is our first edition of Nick's Notes presented by Tinsley Title. As a public address announcer, I get the privilege to see lots of football games at this time of year. Recently, I've been announcing 7th and 8th grade games. So far, I've been disappointed with how athletes at that age act and conduct themselves on the field. In the last weeks, I've seen several targeting calls with blows to the helmet and hitting defenseless players. Personal fouls are on the rise. It's hard to imagine that coaches are teaching these skills, but I've seen fans and some coaches applauding these hits. I've seen a dramatic increase in the face mask penalties, and I'm not just talking about grabbing the face mask to make a tackle, but grabbing the face mask and ripping the helmet off of a player and then throwing it the helmet down. Please, these are 7th and 8th grade players. Teach them the fundamentals of football, how to tackle properly, how to throw, catch, and most of all, have respect for the other team. You may not like them, but show respect to your opponents. I worry about these players as they get older and continue to play and don't learn the real game of football. If they're not taught how, to play, how the game is played, we will continue to see players injured or worse when an official makes a call against them and they attack a referee as we saw several years ago on a high school game on TV. Yes, football is a physical sport, and you have to accept the risks of playing, but you shouldn't have to worry about illegal hits and actions that take away from the fun of the game. For Antler Sports Network, this is Nick Jordan. Thank you, Nick. You can find all of Nick's articles online at antlersn.com forward slash news. Nick's notes are presented by Tinsley Title. Picture this, you're standing in front of your future, a beautiful new home that holds your dreams and aspirations. At Tinsley Title, they're here to ensure those dreams become your reality. Whether you're a seasoned investor or a first-time buyer, your trust is their commitment. Located right in the heart of downtown Athens, Tinsley Title and tinsleytitle.com because your dreams deserve a secure start. We're going to take one more time out. Homecoming festivities are going on here at Scarborough Stadium. And when we come back, we'll have moments away from kickoff. We'll take a look at some games across the East Texas region that we'll be following as the night goes on, as the F battle of FM 59 rages on. This is Texas High School Football, a scouting report game of the week on the Antler Sports Network and ASN Radio, powered by Scouting Report, the official recruiting platform of the Antler Sports Network and ASN Radio. It's Chance Decody, and I'm the pre-owned sales manager at Maritz Chevrolet. The Maritz Promise is a lifetime warranty on the engine and transmission that's given to you at no cost. It's good for the lifetime as long as you own the vehicle. As long as the car is 10 years old or newer and has under 100,000 miles when you buy it, it's going to come with that. It's going to cover everything, all your lubricated parts that's part of your engine or your transmission. Come see us today at Maritz Chevrolet, home of the Maritz Promise. Not only is it going to give you a lifetime warranty, it's going to give you peace of mind and confidence to buy with us. My name is Nathan LeMaster, I'm from Tyler, Texas, and here I have the Pill Puncher. This device, ladies and gentlemen, will help you get into pill packages very easily, sanitarily, and effectively. All you gotta do is take the point, put the puncture the back, right there, take the device, put it over the pill, like so, punk, push it down, drops it in, to the reservoir and there you go folks. Why make this harder on yourselves? Save your fingers and get your pill puncher today. Find your support system at Texas Wesleyan. You'll get the one-on-one -on -one attention you need to succeed. Texas Wesleyan, small classes, big scholarships. Now that's smaller, smarter.
next segment in this game of the week, courtesy of Scouting Report, is going to be our games to watch. Throughout the night, we're going to have some updated scores, not only within the district, but the entirety of the East Texas area. And with those scores is our very own Matthew Hermes. Thanks so much, Jared. Games to watch this week will be Athens versus Lindale, Tyler Chapel Hill versus Palestine, Brownsboro versus Carthage, Canton versus Van, Winona versus Arp, Hawkins versus Beckville, Big Sandy versus Orr City, Hallsville versus Marshall, Pine Tree versus Nacogdoches, Maybank versus Quinlan Ford, and we'll keep you updated all night. Thanks, Matthew. Looking forward to those updates. That scoreboard update was brought to you by East Texas Benefits, local knowledge you can trust. Also, another reminder to be sure to tune in to the Antler Sports Network, specifically ASN2 next week, with pregame beginning at 6.30 p.m. Central with the East Texas Benefits countdown to kickoff. It's Sooner Athletic Football College football action. As the steers of Texas College head up I-69, to take on the Stallions of North American University. Of course, that game and all steer broadcast are brought to you by Yosemite Roofing. Again, the Texas College Steers hit the road to take on the Sooner Athletic Conference's newest member in the North American Stallions. It's Yosemite Roofing Steer Football on ASN2. The East Texas Benefits Countdown to Kickoff gets us going at 6.30 p.m. Central. Myself and our executive producer, Justin Jackson, will be on the call from Stanford Municipal Stadium. So be sure to subscribe to us on YouTube, both pages on ASN1 and ASN2, your new home for high school and college athletics. Homecoming festivities still ongoing here at the home of the Wildcats, and we'll take another break. This is Texas High School Football and a Scouting Report Game of the Week on the Antler Sports Network and ASN2. It's Chance Decody, and I'm the pre-owned sales manager at Maritz Chevrolet. The Maritz Promise is a lifetime warranty on the engine and transmission that's given to you at no cost. It's good for in the lifetime as long as you own the vehicle. As long as the car is 10 years old or newer and has under 100,000 miles when you buy it, it's going to come with that. It's going to cover everything, all your lubricated parts that's part of your engine or your transmission. Come see us today at Maritz Chevrolet, home of the Maritz Promise. Not only is it going to give you a lifetime warranty, it's going to give you peace of mind and confidence to buy with us. My name is Nathan LeMaster. I'm from Tyler, Texas, and here I have the Pill Puncher. This device, ladies and gentlemen, will help you get into pill packages very easily, sanitarily, and effectively. All you gotta do is take the point, put puncture the back, right there. Take the device, put it over the pill, like so. Punk, push it down, drops it into the reservoir, and there you go, folks. Why make this harder on yourselves? Save your fingers and get your pill puncher today. Find your support system. At Texas Wesleyan, you'll get the one-on-one -on -one attention you need to succeed. Texas Wesleyan, small classes, big scholarships. Now that's smaller, smarter.
My name is Chance Decody, and I'm the pre-owned sales manager at Maritz Chevrolet. The Maritz Promise is a lifetime warranty on the engine and transmission that's given to you at no cost. It's good for the lifetime as long as you own the vehicle. As long as the car is 10 years old or newer and has under 100,000 miles when you buy it, it's going to come with that. It's going to cover everything, all your lubricated parts that's part of your engine or your transmission. Come see us today at Maritz Chevrolet, home of the Maritz Promise. Not only is it going to give you a lifetime warranty, it's going to give you peace of mind and confidence to buy with us. My name is Nathan LeMaster, I'm from Tyler, Texas, and here I have the Pill Puncher. This device, ladies and gentlemen, will help you get into pill packages very easily, sanitarily, and effectively. All you gotta do is take the point, put the puncture the back, right there, take the device, put it over the pill, like so, punk, push it down, drops it in, to the reservoir and there you go folks why make this harder on yourselves save your fingers and get your pill puncher today Find your support system. At Texas Wesleyan, you'll get the one-on-one -on -one attention you need to succeed. Texas Wesleyan, small classes, big scholarships. Now that's smaller, smarter.
National Anthem has concluded, and Countdown is just moments away. Crossroads Bobcats versus the Cayuga Wildcats. Our officiating crew, once again, there's back-to-back -back weeks here on the Antler Sports Network that we've had a Tyler officiating crew. Head referee is Tom Cremines. Umpire is Greg Hare. Headline judge is Caleb Searchy. Line judge is Ellery Watson. Back judge, Jake Hutchins. Side judge, John Hummel. Field judge, David Gonzalez. Again, another big thank you to the Tyler football officials crew for bringing their best and brightest to tonight's game. As the American flag gets brought back together right along the 50-yard line in the middle of our field here, the captains are on the field awaiting the coin toss. The hosting Wildcats of Cayuga in their golden tops, white bottoms, black numerals and letterings across the front and back, all black helmet with a golden stripe and the gold and crescent Big C logo in the center of both sides. The visiting Bobcats out of Crossroads and their visiting white tops, green bottoms, green numerals and lettering along the front and back. Silver Crossroads, Texas with the aligned C and R with silver striping on the helmets. Our captains for both teams are about to step onto the field. Captains for the Bobcats is going to be number 70, Landry Hendry. Number 54, Hunter Link. Number two, Wick Jenkins. Homecoming King Jenkins earlier today. And also number eight, Tristan Wilson. Captains for the Bobcats starting is going to be number 44, Braylon Hart. Number five, Riley Brown. Number 54, Colton Hip Hill. And number 75, Ethan Julian. The Bobcats currently with the better record as of right now. Overall record of 3-1, and one, district record of 0-1. Oh the previous games, they started off the game, with, started up the season with three straight wins as they took down the All Saints Trojans. They took down Meridian and also Bruceville Edie, but they lost last week's game at home against Italy, led by head coach Brett Zamzow. On the other side, the Wildcats, the hosting Cayuga Wildcats, won, lost the very first meeting between these two teams in 1987 led by head coach Jacob McGee. Two and three record overall, 0-1-1 in district. His previous games, he dropped his first two against Cushing in overtime and against Mildred. And at home, ended up winning back-to-back -back games against Cumsell and Mount Enterprise. But last week, they lost to Axtell on the road in their district opener. As coach McGee said earlier, one of these teams is going to be 1-1 one one in district. The other team is going to be 0-2. Oh as the Wildcats have won the toss and have elected to receive, both teams shake hands in the middle of the field, and we're set for some good old-fashioned small-town high school football. My broadcast partner and producer for this game, Matthew Hermans. Matthew, we were driving down here on the way to the stadium, and you see that it looks like pretty much everybody from both cities, both both communities, both Cayuga and Crossroads, are in attendance for tonight. You can definitely sense the energy as kickoff is just moments away. Well, as Coach mentioned, it's rivalry. You know what I mean? And uh, you can clearly tell that this is going to be a very competitive game with a lot at stake. Definitely. Looking, looking forward to seeing how this rivalry goes and looking forward to seeing how the game goes. Definitely a lot of stake in this game indeed here at Scarborough Stadium in Cayuga, Texas, the oldest stadium in Anderson County. Initially opened back in 1977. Renovations were made back in 2009. The opposing stands on the other side of us here were installed as the Wildcats will get ready to receive the opening kickoff. Back deep is going to be Jacoby Brown. Brown was also up for homecoming king. Also back deep is going to be Gunnar Douglas, the starting quarterback, and also Tristan Wilson. Here to boot things off for the Bobcats is going to be number 88, Stephen Trubefill, the senior. Kicking off right from the middle of the field. Right-legged kicker. As the cowbells ring, all right, here, like okay, you go. Fresh 12 eight minutes eight are on the clock. The Bobcats, this the Bobcats disperse along the 35. This energy is way more than the people that are actually here. You can feel the energy. It is a very, very competitive game from both fans, and it is going to be a very good game that we got ahead as we're awaiting kickoff. Very good game indeed. Turbofield kicks things off. Short kick, not a lot of distance. It's going to be fielded by Brown at about the 25. Turns across the middle of the field, has a little bit of space. If he can turn up, field, he has space at the 40. At the 45, struck some in at the 50-yard line and gets things going with a big-time hit. And that's how the Wildcats will open things up. Talk about a way to get extra yards. 
Extra yards indeed on the tackle for the Bobcats was going to be Graham Story as we take another look at that kickoff with our first replay brought to you by Circle M Crawfish. Take another look at that big time hit as Brown just goes through his defender and gives the Wildcats prime field position. It's first down and 10, ball is right at midfield. Both of these teams very run heavy, very power heavy. Under center now, it's a quick handoff up the middle, taken down, but he's gonna gain about four. And that's going to bring up second and six on the carry was going to be Shiloh Peckham. You can tell how this offense is very run heavy and how many, how, how the way they utilize their formation is very, very intricate. It's going to be very interesting to see if the defense can keep up. We've already played 30 seconds of football. Lone receiver on the far side of the field is going to be Tristan Wilson. Douglas under center. And off this time is going to be to Jenkins. Jenkins breaks up field. He's at the 40, breaking another tackle. He's at the 35. Gets brought down, moves the chains. Big time gain. Early offense for the Wildcats, Matthew. Incredible way to find the hole through the offensive line. And Jenkins, again, looks like a power runner, and he was able to get them extra yards as well. These guys don't go down easy. You can tell. That's what you get when you have these small town teams, especially in East Texas. A lot of size, a lot of strength, a lot of grit, and a lot of toughness. As we've crossed the one-minute mark, it is 11 minutes flat remaining in quarter number one. The Wildcats, after that big-time run player, looking to capitalize here. A little bit of movement. It's going to be a no, free snap penalty, and this will be our first penalty of the game. They're looking to jump after the past two plays. You, they're showing that they're ready. Tom Creamines stepping out across at the 35-yard line to make the call offsides. Penalty called against the Bobcats, and that'll be a good little extra five yards. If you're crossroads, you don't want to give this Wildcat offense too much momentum, and they really don't get tired, as we've seen already, not only this season in the early stages of the season, but really the past few years. You know they're going to be a run-heavy team. Crossroads knows that, but they're going to have to capitalize. It's going to be a quick handoff right up the middle. On the handoff is Peckham, and Peckham's going to get five, move the chains first down yet again. That's already the third first down for this Cayuga offense, and they are cooking with Grease Matthew with 10.30 remaining in the first. They know exactly what's at stake, and uh, for the defense, it's just pregame jitters. I mean, um, you're going in uh, not even three, four minutes into the game, and you're just kind of trying to get ready, get adjusted to this offense, and uh, see how things go. We're going to call it short. Second and one now. Back under center is Douglas again. Going to make a call, quick change of the line in scrimmage. It's a handoff. Given with a head of steam to Jenkins. Jenkins, did he get the yard? Yes, he did. He's going to gain three, get to the 20, and now the Wildcats are in the red zone, first and 10. Easy call for the coaches. You know you've got a power runner in the backfield. You have to give it to him for sure. If you have sure hands, or in this case, sure legs, that can get great chunks of yards. Can't, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Exactly, exactly. First down and 10. Balls on the 20. 9.43 remaining in the first quarter of play. 14 on the play clock. Douglas back under center. Has two backs in the eye form. It's going to be a quick toss to the outside to Brown. Brown cuts up the middle. He's got space. One more man to bit in the end zone. Touchdown, Cayuga. Incredible blocks, incredible run. Can't, can't draw up the play any better. Jacoby Brown had a head of steam as we look at the replay yet again. And with Brown's downhill speed, he's able to use that stride. And the seniors got us going early as the Wildcats take the 6-0 lead. If you're the Wildcats and know exactly what's at stake, you love a first drive touchdown right now. Definitely, definitely love to get the advantage early, especially in a rivalry game. You want to, I don't want to say strike fear into your opponents, but you definitely want to get things going. Way it's to strike fear into your opponents, Jenkins. going for two. And Jenkins it, it, is in. He got it. Talking about striking fear into your opponents, starting up 8-0. 8-0 already as we take another look at that successful two-point conversion. The Wildcats are already on a roll. Back after this, this is Texas High School Football on the Antler Sports Network, presented by Scouting Report. Here tonight as well. 
as them being here tonight, being part of uh, Coming back after the break, taking another look at that Brown touchdown. That gave us our current 8 nothing lead. And now we are moments away from kickoff. This broadcast of Texas High School Football is brought to you by Pell Shea Kia Tyler. We're tough, never quits. Davis is going to boot things off for the Wildcats. It's going to be an onside kick, high dribbler, and it gets brought down and hauled in. Brown on the tackle, able to haul it in is Caden Lookenbaugh. And now in 935, the Bobcats will get their first drive of the night on offense. Already down 8 nothing. Matthew, is it time to press the panic button? Not at all. It's the first it's the first quarter, but the Wildcats had a very, very commanding drive, so it's going to be very interesting how the Bobcats decide to respond. Especially as we take another look at that two-point conversion. As it seems like there was a penalty against the Wildcats and that two-point conversion, a very gutsy call on the Jenkins run. And after the penalty, that'll give the Bobcats of Crossroads pretty much the exact same opening field position that Cayuga had to start this one. This time, instead of the ball being down at midfield, it's going to be placed at the 49-yard line. 9.35 remaining at quarter number one. Cayuga making a little bit of shift on defense. Shotgun is handed off. Up the middle is going to be Riley Brown getting his first carry of the game. He's going to get a short gain of about three. Brown getting his first carry of the game. He's going to get a short gain of about three. Now check that. That's going to be a gain of two and make it second and eight. Seeing the Wildcats got the run game early, I, I'm assuming the Bobcats want to see if they could get their run game established as well, but they got stuffed short, but I, I'm sure that won't be uh, happening often. I think they'll utilize the run game because it looks like they got a really shifty running back in Tiller. I'm thinking about both of these teams expect them to dominate on the ground. Dropping back to pass. It's Brown. Brown up the middle. Going to be breaking a tackle. First down and still moving. And he's going to gain 11. That's first down and 10. That might have been some of the toughest 11 yards we've seen gained as it seems like it's going to be a Bobcat down after the Jenkins tackle. As on the catch was going to be a Hunter Jocelyn. And he comes off of the field a little hobbled up, but thankfully under his own power. Either way, that will move the chains. First down and 10 for Crossroads. It looks like there's also a flag on the far side. This could be interesting. As it looks like Coach Jacob McGee is laying into someone on that far side. Sports White Conduct penalty called against Cayuga and the officials and a couple of Cayuga coaches are not happy. And that's going to give Crossroads amazing field position, first and ten. I'm not going to lie, I didn't see much, but if you're Crossroads, you have to take that opportunity and you have to capitalize. Fantastic observation, Matthew. If you're the Bobcats, especially against the Cayuga team who can put up points in a hurry, you got to take your opportunities while you can. Brown is back in the gun. The main back to his left is going to be Oliver Tiller. Tiller had that opening run, that gain of two to start off their drive. It's going to be a keeper. Brown gets hit, and he's going to gain two as the tackle was made by the Bobcats. Landon Henry. Henry gets his first tackle of the game, Matthew. Defense definitely did well there, understanding that was a quarterback draw and being able to swallow him up really quickly. Second down and eight with eight minutes and 25 seconds remaining at quarter number one. Crossroads in their green and white in the huddle. They disperse. Ball is currently placed about the 24-yard line. Brown in the gun yet again. Has four receivers out on one of the far side of the field. High snap, makes the handoff. There's a quick pitch and catch to the outside to Story. Story crosses, has one more move. Right along the hashes, has one more tackle to break, but gets brought down. Tackle is going to be made by Jaden Davis, and that's a big-time play on second and long to now move the chains. Crossroads, they're moving on offense. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That's their second screen pass as game them the first down. I wouldn't be surprised if they hit a third here. Substitutions now being made for the Bobcats along the far side sideline. Line. With 7.55 and rolling left in the first quarter of play, and it has been an offensive explosion for both of these teams. Cayuga up 8 0, had a two point conversion that was successful to start off the game. Clock sitting now at 7.40, 10 seconds on the play clock. Brown now under center. It's going to be a handoff up the middle. It's going to be to Tiller. Tiller gets stuffed pretty much where he stood, but out before gaining two. Check that, he's going to gain one. That'll make it second and goal from the 
nine-yard line. This defense has showed from the first drive that they really can recognize that run game, and they have been able to hold them accountable on this first drive. Now, Crossroads, their main offensive weapon in this game in the early stages has been the screen pass. They've ran it twice, and they've gotten big yardage twice. I can understand not wanting to go to it throughout the game, but if you're Cayuga and you're the rest of the defensive coaching staff, you have to recognize that's what Crossroads is going to try to look to when things get dicey. Here's second to go. High snap. Going to be brought back in by Brown. Brown flag on the play on the far side. Shifts to the outside along the numbers. Let's it fly. Throws him in the back of the end zone. Touchdown. But depending on that flag, looking ball hauls in the nine-yard touchdown play. And this is going to be interesting. This is already three flags in this game. Regardless of that flag, the quarterback did a really good job of being able to get away from the defenders and find the open man in the end zone. Offsides penalty called against the Wildcats as looking ball's eight-yard touchdown catch will stand. Now we got ourselves a ball game. Incredible recognition by the wide receivers to be able to get out in the end zone, and, uh, and the quarterback did really well being able to evade the, def the defenders as well. Brown did a great job of salvaging that play. A high snap turning into a touchdown. There's not a lot of big time schools that can say that they convert on opportunities like that, but Crossroads able to capitalize as now it seems like we got ourselves a good old fashioned two point conversion right. contest. That pressure at first is making them go for two, so we're going to see how it goes right here. Brown now in the gun. Tiller to his right. One receiver to to his left. Flag is thrown. It's a handoff to Tiller. Tiller gets stuffed right at the one, but a flag yet again. No good. No good. Hold him tight. Denies the two points by the Bobcats. Looks like that penalty is going to be against Crossroads, and that is a unsuccessful two-point conversion. We're going to keep it here. Matthew, early stages of this game. How do you like the Bobcats on offense responding against the early Wildcat attack? Well, I said it, the Wildcats were, were putting pressure on initially going for that two-point conversion, and you can see how it has paid off. And now the Bobcats not being able to get that two. Oh, looks like that flag was against Cayugan. Crossroads will get another opportunity for two points here. Okay. They can see if they can answer back right here. They say second chances are rare and third chances are rare. Here we go. Bunch formation. Looks like there's going to be a good old-fashioned trench battle. It's going to be a keeper. Skipping through into the end zone is Brown. And two-point conversion is successful. Very Philadelphia Eagle-esque two-point conversion as we're all nodded. It's 8-8. This is a scouting report game of the week on the Antler Sports Network presented by Pell Shake Kia Tyler. We're tough. Never quit. That's the name of the business on this sheet. Name of the business? Yo, uh, yo, 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 Yosemite, yo, Yosemite roofing. Or yo's, yo's me. Yosemite roofing. Yose, Yose Mite. Yose Mite. Hey guys, it's Josiah with Yosemite Roofing, and we don't care what you call us, as long as you call us. After the successful two-point conversion, we're knotted up at eight here at Scarborough Stadium. Jared Jones, Matthew Hermaz here with you for tonight's matchup in the Battle of FM 59. The Cayuga Wildcats eight, the Crossroads Bobcats eight. Ready to tee things back off. Looks like we have a little bit of trouble getting things set in place. Guess the ball doesn't want to cooperate as Turbyville is ready to kick things back off with 6.50 remaining in the first quarter of play. What I've noticed so far is that if you love watching offense, you're going to love watching this game. This is going to be two explosive offensive teams going at it all night. Turbyville gets a pretty good leg into this one. It's going to be hauled in at about the 20 from Brown. Brown gets to the outside. A big time block gets thrown down at about the 33 yard line and that's where Cayuga will take over first and 10. Now in Cayuga's first drive they were able to score as we get another look at the play that got them into the end zone the first time. It was a 7, well excuse me, a 12 yard run in for Brown and Matthew, I'm not a betting man, I'm not the smartest man in the world either but the smart money would say that the Wildcats are going to go back to the rushing attack again. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. We've said it three times already in this broadcast, but it's simply true. You got some hard runners in the backfield, and you just need to give them the ball until the defense learns to stop it. 
Wildcats in their next possession. Here's Brown. Brown picks to the right up the middle. He's going to gain about eight. Coach Jacob McGee wanting a flag. That tackle was made by the Bobcats' Josiah Roberts. Roberts getting his first tackle of the game. And it is a flag. Here we go. Helmet comes off. Brown is not happy as he walks off of the field. And now it seems like Jenkins is speaking to the official, maybe trying to get an explanation, but I don't think he probably got too much of one as the officials surround the football facing a second and short. I simply thought Roberts just had a commanding tackle, just being able to throw him down, especially since he's such a hard runner. So it's going to be interesting to see what this flag is on. Interesting indeed. Our officiating crew out of the Rose City of Tyler, Texas, led by head referee Tom Cremines. With 8, 6.25 remaining in quarter number one, it's 8-8. Eight, eight. It's been a fast-paced game, but we're already just about halfway through the first quarter of play, so it's been a fast and slow, but here we go with Creamines at the 40 with the call. Seems the flag has been waved off, but I'm assuming that Brown will have to sit out of play since his helmet came off, but since it didn't come off in the middle of play, no, it seems like Brown will have to sub off for a play. And now that's going to bring up second down and one for the Wildcats. Just got a little word up here. We do have some homecoming king and queen royalty in the crowd from 2016. 6.25 remaining. As now it seems like Brown has got to step back onto the field. Maybe he is eligible to play as Coach McGee is right at the 40, letting the officiating crew have it. Looks like that's the headline judge is getting a piece of Coach's mind. This game is... This game has been very fast paced, but the referee and officiating has been very, very prominent as well. So it's going to be interesting to see how this game continues to go on as this is, like we said, a rivalry. So this is why it's going to be so competitive and so good. We're just going to see how the referee and officiating is going to command the game. And it looks like, speaking of command, it looks like Coach McGee and the Wildcats will take a timeout. And we'll take a timeout as well. As the Wildcats take their first time out, we'll take it with them. Back after this short break in 30 seconds. It's tied up 8-8. Wildcats, Bobcats on the Hitler Sports Network. It's a scouting report game of the week. Everything at Pell Shake and Tyler, we're tough, never quit. Want to thank Pell Shake our one of our newer sponsors on the Antler Sports Network. And tomorrow night, be sure to come back to ASN2 for our college football matchup. It's all Sooner Athletic Conference football as the Steers of Texas College travel to take on the Stallions of North American University. East Texas Benefits Countdown to Kickoff will get us ready for that matchup at 6 30 p.m. Central on ASN2. After the penalty, the timeout, the trip to the concession stand, and a possible oil change, we're back in football, second down and one. <coughs> Douglas is under center. It's going to be a keeper right up the middle. He got the first down and maybe some change. That's going to be a gain of four. That looks really familiar to what the Bobcats were doing with their quarterback as well, two elusive quarterbacks being able to move the chains and really great play call by the coach. It's been a battle in the trenches already. As now we're starting to see, we have the early fireworks with 614 remaining in the first. We have the early offensive explosion as Douglas goes to speak to his offense. One lone receiver on the far side of the field. The offensive line rushes back to the line of scrimmage. The Bobcats looking to send the house. Two running backs, a tight end, and a receiver. Fake pitch. Spins out of the way. Ball is loose. The Bobcats fall on it. On the hit and the snag is going to be Braden Hart. As Hart was in the right place at the right time as we look again. It seemed like Douglas tried to fake the pitch but didn't really have anyone else to give it to. One miscommunication can change the whole course of this game. That was absolutely, absolutely huge for the Bobcats. Now we'll flip fields. It's first and 10 now for Crossroads. 548 remaining. And as you said, Matthew, that's a big momentum shift. An amazing field position for the green and white attack. Ball's going to be at the 
41-yard line. A lot of flags were thrown on the Bobcats' first drive, so I want to see, without the flags, how they are able to execute on offense. This should be very interesting. It's going to be a lot of yardage gain and loss either in the trenches or in the pockets of the officials. Whoever, Most likely, whoever plays the most disciplined game is going to win this one handedly. Single back set. It's going to be a pitch to the outside. It's going to be hauled in by Tiller. Tiller gets across the 40, and he's going to gain about five. For a pretty good gain, it's going to bring up second and five for the Bobcats. It's a very tough run, and uh, you can tell Tiller is a very shift, is a very shifty yet powerful running back. Really nice run. Tiller, similarly to Brown, you can't give him too much space downhill. That blazing speed can torture you. 5:23 remaining in the first quarter. Project graduation is going to auction off a blanket and a cooler. The Bobcats coming into this one. Their last above 500 season and playoff appearance back in 2003. Looking to have their first ever four and one start in school history. A little bit of movement up front, but Crossroads stays firm. Great shift by Brown. Brown, but officially gets tackled behind the line. That's going to be a loss of two on the initial hit for Cayuga. was going to be Whit Jenkins. Jenkins was there right on schedule, and that pretty much takes away all the big yardage that Tiller gained on the previous play. That's clear. That's not the first time the Wildcats have seen that before. Great defensive play. That's what watching film can get you. After the loss of three is going to be four minutes, four and a half minutes remaining in this first quarter of play. And this has been nothing short of electric. Third down, we've we've seen runs and screens all game. Let's see if we, they force the quarterback to throw. Third down and seven. Brown looking. Throws intended for story incomplete, and that brings up fourth down. Another screen, which has been effective all game, but it makes you question, was that the right play call? Only time will most likely tell. Fourth down, seven to go, 421 remaining in the first. 22 seconds on the play clock. If I'm not mistaken, it looks like they're going for it. Definitely going for it. I mean, in a situation like this where every point matters and every yard matters, some would say go the conservative route and try to put this thing away, but no, why not go in and try to get their extra yards? It could be a very assertive play. Shotgun now for Brown. It looks like Crossroads will take a timeout and talk things over. We'll take it with them. Back in 30 seconds, this is a scouting report, game of the week in the Antler Sports Network and ASN Radio. At Tinsley Title, we're more than just a title company. We're your partners in securing your real estate dreams. Right in the heart of downtown Athens, our dedicated team guides you through every step of the title process. When you've found your dream home and you're ready to take the next step, that's where we come in. We've helped countless in Henderson County and surrounding areas, and we treat every single one of them like family. Whether you're a seasoned investor or a first-time buyer, your trust is our commitment. We're Tinsley Title, your partner every step of the way. After the Crossroads timeout, Matthew, a very pivotal fourth down and seven for Crossroads. Yeah, they must have timed out to rather rethink what they were doing or try to talk about the play call and see, because this is not an easy fourth down whatsoever. So it's going to be very interesting to see how they are, what they are going to do first and how are they, they are going to approach it. Now, this is the main question. Do you keep the same play call, or do you call that timeout to see what the Wildcats will come out in in a defensive right, front standpoint, or do you just want to slow things down and rally the troops yet again? Well, we'll see here. One receiver on the short side of the field, and one on the slot to the opposite, till of the back. Brown on the gun, looking. Cayuga jumps, but does across the line. Brown drops back as a flag is thrown. False start penalty called against the Bobcats. And that's the last thing you want to see on this big fourth down. Not at all, and it makes you rethink. Do you want to go for it now? This is a very, very, very long fourth down. I say go for it. Why not? It's a big-time rivalry game. Conservative calls don't win you games, especially of this magnitude. Take a shot downfield. You have the athletes. You have the quarterback. He has the elusivity to get to the outside and make plays happen with his legs, as we saw earlier in the game with the looking right, ball touchdown. And if you're the coach for the Bobcats, you are you know that you're putting uh, trusting your quarterback, and this is very important for the quarterback to execute, or he is just punting it. Quick kick, very smart quick kick. Ball's going to take a nice solid roll inside the 20. going to be right at the 20-yard line. And now 
Cayuga pretty much gets a, a regular star. We've seen both teams start their drives pretty much right at midfield, but we've never really seen either team try to drive the length of the field, and now the Wildcats will have that opportunity here first and ten. And I'm not a betting man either, but I can tell you that the run game is going to be very evident in this drive, and we are going to see how effective it will be as well. We know that run game is going to be both of these teams' bread and butter. As we saw, Crossroads willing to mix it up a little bit with a little bit of the screen game and how the Wildcats respond. Here's Douglas, the sophomore quarterback. Takes the snap. He's going to keep it himself. Goes up the middle. He's got space. Has to turn the corner at the 30. 35 gets brought down. Big time gain. 20-yard rush. Tackle is going to be made by the Bobcats. Braden Hart. Hart, his second tackle of the game. And that's a very important play on first down, Matthew. If you're Gunner Douglas, you have to put that miscommunication. He had last drive behind him, and that's a great start. Fantastic start indeed. Ball is right on the 35-yard line. Three minutes and 44 seconds remaining after the change get moved, and the clock will roll. Douglas now on the gun. Has two receivers, one on the far side of the formation. It gets bobbled. He'll fall on it. Crossroads almost had an opportunity to get on the football themselves. But now that's going to be second down in about five after the loss. Bad snap, but you got to be thankful for the recovery if you are a Wildcat fan. It's second down in Highway 287 to go. Second and 15, according to the chain crew. Three minutes, 10 seconds remaining. Going back out as a lone receiver is going to be Wilson. He's going to be tailed by Josiah Roberts. Roberts already has a tackle into this game. One of those being that only tackle being a tackle for a loss. It's a pitch to the outside. It's going to be to Jenkins. Jenkins bounces across the tackles, gets to about the 40, gets hauled down. Ball might have popped out, but the initial tackle was going to be made by Detavion Price. And the Price is right as Price might have saved a touchdown there. Looks like the Bobcats' heart initially went for the shoelaces but wasn't able to bring them down, but Price was able to save a possible first down run. Second or two or second and 20, I bet my bottom dollar the Wildcats are going to run this football down their throats. Third and five, two minutes, 18 seconds remaining. Crowding the line of the Wildcats. Under center is Douglas. Douglas going to pick it outside to Brown. Brown gets up the middle. He's got breakaway speed at the 30, 45, 30, 25, 20, 10, 5. Gets wrestled down deep into the red zone. Move the chains. What you saw there by Brown was incredible patience, waiting for his offensive line to get them blocks and then follow up with an absolutely incredible run inside the end zone. Or uh, red zone, excuse me. Touchdown saving tackle by Riley Brown. That's Brown's second tackle of the game. And that brings up a pivotal first and goal for the Wildcats. Two minutes, four seconds remaining in quarter number one. Last time the Wildcats were this deep into the red zone, they left with eight points. As the clock will move, we're inside to English in the gun. Excuse me, under center. It's going to be a handoff. Cut up the middle. It's going to be Jenkins into the end zone. Touchdown, Wildcats. Wildcats are unstoppable with this run game right now, and they're showing it. I'm sure they won't stop the next drive. It's going to be very interesting to see if they go for two again right here. I'd say go in and go for two. You're one for one. Who says two for two is all that bad? Continue to apply pressure. Make the Bobcats respond with force. One fifty remaining. Douglas and Wilson break away from Coach McGee. He took this team to back-to-back -to -back playoff berths in his two years over the Wildcats. He's the second head coach in 10 years. Here's the two-point conversion attempt. It's a pitch to Brown. Brown into the end zone. Did he get in? Yes, he did. Number one, Brown. Brown's a playmaker. Who else are you going to give it to? Give it to the man that drove you down the field. Great play call up. Another big time run for Brown. Another eight points for the Wildcats. How will the Bobcats respond? We'll find out in 30 seconds. This is a scouting report game of the week on the Antler Sports Network and Antler Sports Network Radio. What's the name of the business on this? Name of the business? Ooh, uh, yo, yo, 
Yosemite? Yosemite? Yosemite roofing. Or Yos... Yosme? Yosemite roofing? Yose, Yose Mite. Yose Mite? Hey guys, it's Josiah, Yosemite Roofing. And we don't care what you call us, as long as you call us. Matthew, I don't know about you, but this has been an offense-heavy game. Defensive coaches, beware, as it seems that the Wildcats are ready to kick things back off. Here to do the kicking is going to be Jaden Davis. Onside kick, here we go. The Bobcats fall on it yet again. Drake Manos able to fall on the football with a minute 50 left. Bobcats will take over first and 10 from the 47. And Matthew, if you're the Bobcats, we, I asked you this the first time. I'm going to ask it over with, get your offense down the field and not really panic, but pick up the urgency. Or do you just slow things down and stay within your game with a minute 50 remaining in the first? Well, if you're the coach of the Bobcats, you have to understand that your offense is doing really well and you don't have to worry about that, but you have to worry about your defense who is crumbling under the Wildcats offense right now. So I would be making sure, giving them tips on the sidelines and making sure that they are ready for the next drive as I would be confident that the Bobcats can run down the field and have the opportunity to score. It's been the Oliver Tiller show on offense, but it was a Caden looking ball, 11-yard touchdown pass from Brown that got them these eight points. Let's see if that connection can get him in the end zone again. It's going to be a handoff over to Tiller yet again. Tiller's not going to gain much. He gets to midfield. He's going to gain three. Cayuga pops up with the football. But Tiller was already down. Running out of the pile with the ball is Landon Henry. Henry already has a tackle for loss and a solo tackle. It's been a great game for the young man. Quick celebration by the coach and the tackle made it seem like they recovered a fumble, and that kind of makes your heart drop if you're a Bobcat. But thankfully they were able to recover it, and now we'll see how they respond. Second down and seven after the gain of three from Tiller. Tiller and the rest of the Bobcats in the eye form. Quick pass to the outside, big time hit, but not before Jocelyn can haul it in. But it ain't going to be enough for a first down. But there's that Bobcat passing game, Matthew, that you warned about that can get a quick play out of nowhere. Tiller shows his ability to get the ball out quick and be able to deliver it to the receiver, who made a great catch holding onto the ball, jumping in the air. So third down. We know they're going for it on fourth down. We're just going to have to see if they're able to get the first down here and respond. After the catch from Story, it's third and two. Big time third down. Eye formation for the Bobcats. It's a quick run to the outside. Shift, great move. Gets to the outside. Spins. Still not brought down, but eventually gets rolled for a progress. We'll get him to the 39, and that's first down and 10 after the carry from Brown on the tackle. Was the quarterback, Gunnar Douglas. That was nothing short of incredible. He was able to get to the sideline, and he's very, very shifty for a quarterback. So he's clearly a dual threat, and you can clearly see that they're going to be able to utilize him like that for the rest of the game. Brown, the junior, on that gain of five. Ten seconds remaining in the first, and it seems like both teams are, for the first time tonight, going to take a deep breath and take a break. Three seconds, two seconds, and one. We have played one quarter of football. We've pretty much seen an entire half's worth of offense, Matthew. We're going to take a quick break. 30 seconds, second quarter action. Back after this, it's the battle of FM 59 on the Antler Sports Network with the scouting report game of the week on ASN 1, ASN 2, and ASN Radio. At Tinsley Title, we're more than just a title company. We're your partners in securing your real estate dreams. Right in the heart of downtown Athens, our dedicated team guides you through every step of the title process. When you found your dream home and you're ready to take the next step, that's where we come in. We've helped countless in Henderson County and surrounding areas, and we treat every single one of them like family. Whether you're a seasoned investor or a first-time buyer, your trust is our commitment. We're Tinsley Title, your partner every step of the way. Offense has been the name of the game. Jared Jones, Matthew Hermans up in the HTO broadcast booth with his 2A Division I Region 2 District 6 matchup, a rivalry that dates back to 1987, the Battle of FM 59 between the Wildcats of Cayuga and the Bobcats of Crossroads. Matthew, you have a quick update on some of our local scores? 
The games to watch, all the games to watch this week are currently 0-0. Nothing like this offense that we are watching right now, which is why this right here is the game of the week. Game of the week indeed, brought to you by Scouting Report, official recruiting platform of the Antler Sports Network. Brown is back in the gun. To his right is going to be Tiller. Tiller takes a shotgun snap, looking, drops back, rolls to his left, winds up, is going to have to get out of here now. Loses some yards. Now he's going to turn the corner, gets the first down and looking for more. Gets pushed out of bounds at about the 30-yard line. And that's how you turn something out of nothing on first and ten. Tiller was very patient looking for his receivers. He couldn't find them, and he was, uh, was very confident that he was able to get the run, evade the defenders, and get the first down. This is a dual-threat quarterback we're watching right now that they are utilizing to the best ability currently. That was some of the hardest ten yards I've seen gained. He went back ten, got back to the line of scrimmage, and gained ten more. Well, I guess... As long as it moves the chains, it doesn't really matter that much, does it? 11.50 left to go in the first half. As a quarterback, you got to be ready for the moments, and it's clear that this is a quarterback who is extremely ready for these type of moments. Brown, quick pitch. Catch to the outside is going to be hauled in by Jocelyn. Jocelyn gets rolled down after gaining about six. Tackle is going to be made by Whit Jenkins. Jenkins, his third tackle of the contest. That will make it second down and about five to go. Bring up second down and five for the Bobcats. Clock rolling, 11:20. So I'm having a little trouble here with my remaining as far as when you end of the first half of play. The Wildcats up 16 to eight against their visitors. Seven minutes away. We're in Scarborough Stadium, the oldest stadium in Anderson County, opened back in 1977. Renovations were made in 2009 to add the visiting stands across the field. High snap hauled in across the field. High Take snap hauled in by Brown. Brown, a quick pass across the middle. It's going to be hauled in with a head of steam by Story. Story needs a touchdown crossroads. You are seeing a lot more offense within this Bobcats team. This is nothing they showed on the first drive, and this was a very, very, very impressive drive on the Bobcats end, starting off with their quarterback. Well, a wise man once said it's almost like a Cadillac. you got to give it a little bit of time to start up with 10.54. It's fair to say that both of these teams are rip-roaring and ready for this rivalry matchup. A story It's the hard-fought catch right across the middle, taking a couple defenders with him to break into the end zone, and now the Bobcats want an opportunity to tie. Wonder if they had another quick pass here. The receivers have been able to benefit off the quarterback's quick release that he's been able to give them. Brown on the gun. Tiller his back. Going to keep it. Jump pass. It's intercepted. Cayuga's got it going the other way. Going across the field is Beckham at the 40. Midfield. He sees nothing but green. 30, 20, 10, 5. Touchdown. Touchdown, Wildcats. Matthew, pick up the phone. We got ourselves a house call with 10, 10 54 remaining. Wow. Beckham, after the Brown jump pass was picked off, got one block, and that was all he needed. You know, I, I didn't see the jump pass coming, but the defense did. They made an incredible play, ran over 100 yards to be able to score. They were just ready. That's all I can say. They were just ready. I don't have a tape measure, but I'd say that was about a 102-yard rush total. Wow. Beckham had pretty much, as soon as he broke across the 10, I don't know if he runs track or not. I'm not 100% sure. Might have to find out at halftime. But they might have found themselves their next 100-meter dasher after that big-time play. We're going to keep it here as we prepare for kickoff. This has been – this might is already contender for game of the year, Matthew. I don't know about you. Yeah, the games I've watched on the Antler Sports Network, this is very offense-heavy, and I'm, a, I'm an offensive type of guy. I love watching – football teams just strictly score and this is what we're getting here and even though it was a defensive play it still led to a score and we are in for ourselves for a great competitive game and you can just tell that the rivalry is there with how hard these guys are competing. The stands pretty much filled on both sides. It seems like a football has hit the window here at the press box. Look at that. Strong arm cheerleaders down there. That's a pretty good same throw. Deep, same if Coach, Mac, if Coach McGee right. needs a quarterback, I think one of the some of the Cayuga cheerleaders could be a pretty good contender for the starting job. But anywho, the Bobcats will kick things back off. Turby Phil will boot things away. Brown, Jenkins, and Douglas back deep to receive. Ball at the 40-yard line. Teed up. No onside kick this time. It's going to be over, over the head. Of Wilson, Wilson shoots back, and he's going to be pushed out of bounds. And the Bobcats with a big-time play on special teams. 
But let's look at the some of the plays that we've seen throughout this game that have set up this shootout going back to the Beckham touchdown interception on the two-point conversion. Again, Brown on the jump pass. It's pretty much read like a book, but all that was set up by the story. Touchdown going into the end zone, and now that gives us our 18 to 14 score. It's going to be first down and 10 for the Wildcats. In very tough positioning, but I did want to mention, I'm not really a guy to look at kickers, but that kick landing flat on the ground, being able to make the special teams really have to approach that ball differently was what was able to actually get them that far back. Ten and a half minutes now as the run is going to go absolutely nowhere. I'm trying to see if that was a keeper or not. Ball came out, but the Bobcats not able to fall back on it. It's going to be second and ten. And about this time, with so much ripping and running between both of these teams, it's got to be plenty of fatigue on the field. Both teams are tired, been running a lot on the field. You have to think, when is the exact moment in which fatigue will separate these two teams? Well, if I was the coach, I would tell the Bobcat defense to step up, and if they step up, the fatigue is definitely going to show within this de uh, offense. Brown, the pitch to the outside. Reaches out, but it's only going to gain about eight. That'll make it third down and eight. But you mentioned fatigue. This Wildcat offense has a variety of runners, so I don't think fatigue would necessarily be a worry in this offense. The quarterback could run. The running back can run. you got a second running back that can run. It, there, shouldn't be, there shouldn't be no worry of fatigue. This offense is very explosive. First ever meeting between both of these teams back in 1987. It was here at Scarborough Stadium. The Bobcats won the opening matchup by a score of 29 to 12. We're already poised to see more points than that from one team. Maybe the combined total from their first meeting might be scored by either of these ball clubs. It's going to be a handoff right up the middle to Jenkins. Jenkins pushes through. He's going to gain five and move the chains first down for KU go. Jenkins is most definitely the difference maker in between this offense and defense because Jenkins is a tough runner. If the defense can't stop him, this is going to be happening all game. I guarantee you Jenkins is not going to get fatigued. He looks like a strong runner, and if he becomes unstoppable, it's going to be a very, very big problem for the Bobcats. Jenkins, after the five-yard run, steps back onto the field. First down and ten. 8.45 remaining. Ball is on the 29-yard line. Check that, the 31-yard line. Going to be a handoff to Brown. Brown gets the first down, stepping through, and takes a big-time hit. His helmet pops off. Tackle is going to be made by the Bobcats number 34, Kane Ornalis. Ornalis with his first tackle and another potentially touchdown-saving tackle. First down, Wildcats. Like I said, there's, there's plenty of runners in this offense, and <laughs> They're, they're completely unstoppable right now. They are not able to be stopped. And if you're the Wildcats, you're going to have to make some sort of adjustment to be able to stop this explosive offense that's going on right now. Neutralizing the speed. Brown checks out. Checking in is going to be Cameron Stiegel. Wilson once again, the lone receiver at the bottom of your screen. The Wildcats rush to the line. This is going to be a battle of the Buffet Busters right in the trenches. Pitch to the outside. It's Bobble turning up the corner, turning to the outside. is going to be Peckham. Peckham had a return touchdown earlier, and he is going to gain 11, first down and 10. Again, I can keep going uh, back to it. Playmakers, this offense is filled with them. Peckham bobbled the, the hauling on the pitch, but was able to recover it and keep the chains moving. It's first and 10, balls right at the 45. And this is the first time either, I would think that either of these teams have really just dug in and just marched down the field as we cross the eight minute mark. The Wildcats up 18 to 14. Last run by Peckham, he was the one that gained the Bobcats the four point lead after a 102 yard run back into the end zone as they give it to Peckham again. Peckham gets to the 40. That's gonna be a gain of five. Second down and five coming up. They're running, like, they're running it like clockwork. It's very, very impressive. This is what you call an efficient run game, and it seems like we have an injured Bobcat on the field, and as he gets attended to, we'll take a short break and maybe get some local scores. Back after this, this is Texas High School Football on the Antler Sports Network and ASN2. That's the name of the business on this.
Name of the business? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ooh, uh. Yo. 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 Yosemite? Yo. Semite? Yo. Mighty Roofing. Or Yo. Yo. Me. Yo. Smitty Roofing? Yo. Ze. Yo. Ze. Might. Yo. Ze. Might? Hey guys, it's Josiah with Yosemite Roofing, and we don't care what you call us, as long as you call us. The injured Bobcat who walks off of the field under his own power was Dictavian Price. Price has been a, one of the many Ironman players for both of these teams, and that's the beauty of small town East Texas high school football. You see a lot of guys playing both sides of the ball, and we're definitely going to be able to see that the rest of this contest. Another reminder that tomorrow night we have college football action on ASN2. It's the Texas College Steers heading up I-69 to take on the newest member of the Sooner Athletic Conference and the Stallions of North American University. Pre-game from Stafford, Texas, with the East Texas Benefits countdown to kickoff will be at 6.30 p.m. Central. Myself and Justin Jackson and crew will be on the call. The Steers and the Stallions on ASN2. To the outside, now looking at the first and longest, Douglas. Douglas running, has a flag thrown at about the 40-yard line. And this is going to be interesting as on the tackle, it's going to be Braden Hart. Incredible run, but if it is holding, that would be very detrimental. But we will see how they respond. we got to see what the call is. 7-18 remaining. It seems like the head official will break off of the huddle. And here's the white hat, Tom Cremens with the call, and, holding. And they're walking back. Matthew, you could be a referee. That was a great call. Just a, just a lucky guess. <laughs> lucky guess, huh? Well, lucky guess gives you one for one. 7-18 still remaining. After that penalty, that'll bring up second down in a country mile. Second down in 13 specifically. This presentation of Texas high school football presented by Pell Shea Kia. Tyler, we're tough, never quit. Shop their full inventory of New and pre-owned vehicles at PellShakeHeadTyler.com. 7.07 remaining, and this is the slowest the game has been. We're used to fireworks and quick-hitting plays both in through the air and on the ground, but now it seems like we've slowed things down a bit. Douglas is under center. It's going to be a handoff up the middle to Jenkins. Jenkins barrels his way through, and a referee falls. As... Looks like it was a battle between Landon Henry and Josiah Roberts, and a referee is down as he takes a nasty spill. And as he gets attended to, we'll take a short break right after this. It's the Texas High School Football on the Antler Sports Network. everything at Pell Shakey and Tyler we're tough never quit seems like the official is back up and ready to go and Matthew was that the first time at least when both of us are on air together that we've seen a referee take a tumble I know this is the first time I've ever seen it maybe you've seen it at some other point Actually, I think we have uh, one oh, game we, we did. did broadcast. Last one year. of the running backs did indeed truck the referee. That was last year, the Tatum versus Lumberton broadcast in Lufkin that we saw the back judge get tackled. I believe it was by the Tatum running back, or was it? No, correction, that was the Lumberton running back. This is the second official that we've seen on the Antler Sports Network. How's that for a fact of the day? It's going to be a quick pitch to the outside to Brown. Brown gets the first down, move the chains yet again. And Matthew, here's his first stat. This is Brown's third first down of the game. He has been electric in the backfield for the Wildcats. Yeah, he's been the, he's been the difference maker for sure and been very, very impressive this, this whole drive. With six minutes and 25 seconds. With six minutes and 25 seconds remaining in this game. Number one, Jacoby Brown moving the chains for the Wildcat offense. 
Okay, First down at 10. Clock is rolling. 6-12 remaining in this one. Much formation here for the Wildcats. Wilson, the lone receiver. Going to be a quick pitch to the outside. With it is Jenkins. Jenkins gets to the outside, gets barreled down at the 20. And he'll move the chains yet again. That's going to be a gain of about 14. That's another Wildcat first down. I mean, I can say it once, I'll say it again. Playmakers, playmakers, playmakers that cannot be stopped right now. Very, very impressive for the Wildcats. This might be some of the most dominant display of running for either team that we've seen this season. Last week, the, the Dragons rushing attack of Nacogdoches high as they traveled up to White House on homecoming in the home of Patrick Mahomes. The Dragons showed a pretty prominent rushing attack, but I don't know about you, this Wildcat rushing attack can definitely contain it with them. It's a quick handoff, and it's going to be drop a pick back up by Douglas as Douglas trucks the man all the way through. How's that for a way to make up for a play as we check out the circle and crawfish instant replay? Almost seemed intentional with how good that run worked out after the drop and uh, picked it back up. Big time truck able to get some extra yards. What almost would have been a loss of a good amount turns into a gain of seven. It's second and three with five minutes remaining in this one. Second down and short, three yards to go. Four minutes and 48 seconds remaining in this one. Now, if you're the Wildcats, we know how they're going to score. If anything, we, we, we've got to wonder how many plays right. until they do Wildcats score. It's been that potent of an offense indeed as a timeout gets called and will take it with them back after this is Texas High School Football on the Antler Sports Network, ASN Radio and ASN2. At Tinsley Title, we're more than just a title company. We're your partners in securing your real estate dreams. Right in the heart of downtown Athens, our dedicated team guides you through every step of the title process. When you found your dream home and you're ready to take the next step, that's where we come in. We've helped countless in Henderson County and surrounding areas, and we treat every single one of them like family. Whether you're a seasoned investor or a first-time buyer, your trust is our commitment. We're Tinsley Title, your partner every step of the way. After the Wildcats timeout, both teams stepping back onto the field, 4.42 remaining in this one want to thank take a moment to thank the entire antler sports network crew today our camera operators danny wimpy and nathan kenny our head writer and producer nick jordan our executive producer justin jackson back at our houston area headquarters and of course my broadcast partner for this evening matthew hermans matthew last time you were up here was that game we talked about before the last break it was the tatum versus lumberton game we saw a lot of running there and we're seeing Pretty much the same amount of running here. It's second down and three. Handoff, the outside along the hashes, pushing through, and the Wildcats think they got it, and they did. Gain of three, Jenkins gets exactly what he needed to move the chains. Not only moving the chains, not only moving the chains, but a special assist from uh, Presley Warden as well, making sure he gets there. You love a good old-fashioned push from your offensive line. One thing about both of these teams is, as my grandma always said, when you have guys this big, you call them cornbread fed. Plenty of size for both of these teams on the offensive and defensive fronts. They're going to call them short. Check that. It's going to be third and one. The flag is going to be called. A lot of movement pre-snap. What we thought was a first down ended up being a third down. We'll see who ended up being the one that jumped early here. Say it's going to be false start called against Cayuga. Push him back five. This would be a big stop by the Bobcats. Stopping their momentum would be absolutely huge, but we'll see what ends up happening with this explosive offense. The Wildcats coming into this one won their last matchup and the last rendition of the Battle of FM 59, defeating the Bobcats by a score of 54 to 16. Here it is to Brown. Brown looking to make something happen. He's going to get a short game. He's only going to gain one. That might be the first time we've seen Brown stopped this early on into the run. And it's fourth down in a pretty good distance. The Bobcat defense locking in and holding on. If I'm the Wildcats, I feel like I, I gave it to the right person to be able to get that first down. And just unfortunate, but the Bobcats were able to step up. And if they step up here, this might be the biggest play of the game so far. 
Three minutes, 17 seconds remaining at quarter at number two. The huddle dispersing for the Wildcats. Douglas under center. Takes the snap. Pitch to the outside. And it's a Jenkins. Jenkins cuts across the middle. He's got space. At the 10 foot goal on touchdown. The Wildcats get it in on fourth down. As I saw the head official stood at about the 20 and waved off. I don't think that touchdown is going to be taken off the board, and it won't. Jenkins with an incredible run, just following his blockers, amazing blocks. And what looked like a tackle that could have stopped it by the Bobcats ended up being evaded by Jenkins, who just had an absolutely incredible run there and was willing to step up when he needed to. Jenkins put his left foot on the left hash, on the outside, or the inside of the left hash, cut across the field and gets into the end zone. It's a toss to Brown. Brown to the outside looking, they push, and the Bobcats hold him off. Big time stop, but it's a 10 point ball game. We got three minutes remaining, and the KU Go Wildcats are reeling. Your score, the Wildcats 24, Crossroads 14. Back in 30 seconds, it's a scouting report game of the week on the Antler Sports Network and ASN2. Back after the failed two-point conversion, the Bobcats, however, expand their lead to 10. It's 24 to 14 in our scouting report game of the week. And Matthew, if you're the Bobcats, what's it gonna take to stay into this one with plenty of time left in the game? Well, a simple score of any kind on this offensive drive will most definitely help, but with this Wildcat offense being so explosive, you want to end this half off on a good note, and I feel like scoring here isn't isn't key, but if you want to win, this is a very, very important possession that the Bobcats will have. Davis looking to tee things back off and get us back going. The deepest recipient of the football is going to be hauled in by Roberts at the 30-yard line, cutting across, gets drug down before he can get to the 40, and pretty solid field position for the Bobcats to begin this next drive. And Matthew, I'm out of Baker, but if you want to put together a nice little score, you got to have the right ingredients and good field position. It's about as fundamental as milk and eggs. Well, it's, it's clearly evident why the Wildcats go for two every time they score, but giving that good position to the Bobcats is going to be very interesting to see with the time that they have if they are going to be able to capitalize now I think they will personally that's just my guess but we'll have to see how, who steps up and if they are able to step up I think the quarterback is going to be the most important player on the field right now in terms of making sure they're able to score the football Brown Brown and company of this crossroad offense has been pretty consistent so far today, only a couple of miscommunications, but the Bobcats offense were able to capitalize. Just don't want their luck to run out. We're not a lot of time left. In motion is gonna be Stewart. They take the hand off to him. Brown steps up in the pocket, has a block, looking, winds up, throws it into the flat to Story. Story steps out of bounds, but now before he gains five, pushed out at about the 45 yard line. And that's a solid play. And one thing about this Bobcat team, even when it seems like they have absolutely nothing left in a play, they find a way to make things happen. Well, that's all attributed to the quarterback, Riley Brown, and he has been very impressive. He showed why he seems like he has a, that star power, that it factor, that's able to keep them in the game. He's been able to have his connection with his receivers. He's been able to extend plays, and he's been so impressive so far. Result of the play is going to be second and four. Ball is right on the 45-yard line. Wildcats looking to send the blitz, and they do. Brown under pressure. Hauled in by Tiller. Tiller, big time. Juke will get some block, but he's only going to get to the line of scrimmage. He had a block in front of him by D'Angelo Vasquez. 
But as we look at the Circle M Crawfish replay okay. here, Brown did a great job getting it to Tiller. Big time juke, but his own blocker seemed to be his own detriment. Now that brings up third and four with 2.15 remaining in the first half. Unfortunately, unfortunately, looked like a screen play more than a block play. Unfortunately, we are not playing basketball, so that did not help them whatsoever, but we are going to see if Brown and company will be able to get this first down. Well, to your credit, Vasquez was moving forward while setting a screen, so any either way that being be an illegal screen. But like you said, we're not on the hardwoods just yet. High snap is right over the head of Brown. Brown picks it up, winds up, throw across the middle. He's got a man. Cut, no! That is very, very saddening. I was about to say Brown's got that four-letter word that's been trending aura. But unfortunately, he cannot have that connection with his receivers like he's been able to have. Slightly short throw, but a very easily catchable throw. Now we have a flag on the play, so we'll be looking to see what that will be. Just Jocelyn, the intended receiver, man. That's that's very unfortunate. That's that's one play that you, if you love offense, you just want to see that connect. You know what I mean? Definitely. Could have been an early contender. It looks like the penalty was against the Bobcats and gets declined. Now it's going to be fourth down and four. And it's decision time for the Bobcats. you got a minute 49 left. If you have confidence in your offense and strictly confidence in your defense, knowing that they cannot kick a field goal and they're going to have to score, going for it would be the best decision, but we will see what they're doing here. Possible quick kick situation for Brown, the exact same formation their last quick kick was in. Flag is thrown. That's going to move the chains. Free play. Rolling to the outside is Brown. Brown along the numbers at the 40. Chased, winds up, gets the first down, still getting extra change and steps out of bounds. Now the opposite 45. Although the Wildcats have had an amazing explosion on offense with so many different playmakers, the person that has impressed me the most is Riley Brown. He has been so impressive in terms of extending plays, getting connection with his receivers. He is everything you want in a quarterback, and I hope he gets more people to notice how good he truly is. Penalty, of course, against the Wildcats is declined. Move the change. The drive continues. A minute 38. It's a 10-point game. The Bobcats is their best looking to have their best start in program history. Last time this Bobcat team had an above 500 season was back in 2003. A win tonight will bring their first four and one start in program history. Brown of the gun has a back to his right. Four receivers out total. Brown looking, rolls out to his left, gets pressure now spinning out to his right. Not a lot of space, not a lot of time. Throw incomplete. Attended yet again for Joslin and that brings up second down. Now you have to wonder if that was intended, of course. There looked like there was defenders in that area and might have just wanted to throw the ball away, but no loss of yardage is the most important part of that play right there, and you just got to be thankful that after that pass rush that you didn't lose any yards, you didn't gain any yards, you have a, a chance to breathe, reset, and get ready for the second down. Matthew, have you talked about pretty much all game long, Brown has been able to extend plays with his legs, and he's pretty much kept this Bobcat offense afloat. There are many times where... Other offenses would have crumbled and taken the big-time loss of yards because the Cayuga pass rush so far has been absolutely relentless, but Brown is able to handle the pressure, get it out of Dodge, and now looking at second and 10 from about midfield. Brown takes a shotgun snap, looking, throw across the middle. It's incomplete intended for Joslin. Right on his tail was Beckham. Might have heard footsteps and dropped the football. Big-time opportunity squabbled by the Bobcats now facing third and long. A routine route that you know that they practice. It's just a very unfortunate that, that that's the second dropped pass this game. You practice those in practice, routine, catch, run, but it's just unfortunate that Brown is not being able to necessarily connect with his receivers currently, and especially in this position where they need to score. Well, not necessarily need, but it would be very, very important in this game for them to score. So we'll see if they can ch change what's happening on this third down right here. Stay with us after the remaining 2.15 for the HTO halftime refresh. As now it's going to be a keeper to Brown. Brown gets pressured, almost gets brought down, still up on his feet. He gets brought down right on the other side of midfield. Multiple Wildcats on the tackle. Landon Henry was the first Bobcat, excuse me, the first Wildcat to get to him. And that's a big, big stop for the Wildcats. This makes you think, after the first two drops, drawing up a quarterback draw, wonder if that was intentional after the first two dropped passes by the receivers. 
although the pass rush was there, Brown was trying to escape, but it's fourth and a quarter mile in the half road we had to take down here to get here. <laughs> it's, we'll, we'll see. It looks like they're going to punt here, maybe draw them off sides again. That's the way this drive had been extended. Brown, oh, there it is. A flag is thrown. Quick kick. Ball is going to take a bounce at the 30. It's like a pretty good bobcat rolling out of the 35. Oh, 25 still rolling. And that will be down. But there is a penalty on both sides of the line of scrimmage. 24 seconds remaining in this one. Officials can convening right above the black and white okay, you can see logo right in the middle as we talk with Coach McGee pregame. They paint something different pretty much every week. Combination of colors, whether that be black and gold or black and white or any of the varying wildcat threads. It seems like it might be a penalty called maybe against the Wildcats as they trot back. Yeah, they're That's, not going to re-kick. They're not going to re-kick. It's our ball. From ball what we're being told, called. it looks like is the Wildcats football. Indeed, and you hate to have that for the Bobcats. You fought through that entire drive just to come up with a flag that you really can't take advantage of. And now the Wildcats have a little bit of time, 24 seconds left to pretty much travel 75 yards. And if they have, a, if anybody in the in the building has the weapon to move that much of a distance with such a short amount of time, it's Brown Jenkins and the rest of this Wildcat offense. 24 to 14. 24 seconds remaining. Pitch to the outside to Brown. Brown's got ahead of steam. Now looking, cuts across the middle, but gets tackled after gaining eight. Stop made by Drake Manos. Manos his second tackle of the game. Again, you see that patience after the toss, waiting for his blockers, making sure his blockers are set, and then being able to find the hole. And that's what he's able to do. It looks like they are going to run the clock out. And that no, was the last. timeout. Oh. Timeout called by the Wildcats. They want to see if they can get this thing into the end zone. They take their final timeout. They have no more timeouts remaining. As be sure to stay with us after this 14 seconds elapses. We'll have our HTO halftime refresh. We'll hear again from our head writer, Nick Jordan. Preview our upcoming college football Saturday night broadcast in the Sooner Athletic Conference. Matthew and I will discuss what we noticed from the first two quarters of play and also look at some scores across the East Texas region. All that and more coming up after 14 seconds. The HTO halftime refresh. This is Cayuga timeout. Very much of importance. The Wildcats were 2009 state champions. Their first season, here's some of our fun facts of the day presented by Scouting Report. The Wildcats are the youngest team in Anderson County. They played their first season back in 1977. And since 2005, the Wildcats are 28 and 12 against teams whose main colors are green. So how's that? <laughs> right right when you right when I think you're done with the outlandish fun facts you always seem to come with something more outlandish Matthew you've known me for long enough I stay with fun facts as Brown takes a hand up up the middle eight seconds left don't think they'll have enough time to rush back to the line at scrimmage that will move the chains but they'll give him a temporary time to get back to the line clock instructed to roll Four seconds, three, and it looks like that will be the conclusion of the first half. We've hit halftime. It's been an offensive onslaught after two quarters here in Cayuga, USA. It's been two quarters. Your score, the Wildcats 24, the Bobcats 14. We'll take a four-minute timeout and begin our HTO halftime refresh. This is a scouting report game of the week on the Antler Sports Network, ASN Radio, and ASN2. My name is Chance Decody, and I'm the pre-owned sales manager at Maritz Chevrolet. The Maritz Promise is a lifetime warranty on the engine and transmission that's given to you at no cost. It's good for the lifetime as long as you own the vehicle. As long as the car is 10 years old or newer and has under 100,000 miles when you buy it, it's going to come with that. It's going to cover everything, all your lubricated parts that's part of your engine or your transmission. Come see us today at Maritz Chevrolet, home of the Maritz Promise. Not only is it going to give you a lifetime warranty, it's going to give you peace of mind and confidence to buy with us.
My name is Nathan Lamaster. I'm from Tyler, Texas, and here I have the Pill Puncher. This device, ladies and gentlemen, will help you get into pill packages very easily, sanitarily, and effectively. All you got to do is take the point, put puncture the back, right there. Take the device, put it over the pill, like so. Punk, push it down, drops it in to the reservoir, and there you go, folks. Why make this harder on yourselves? Save your fingers and get your pill puncher today. Find your support system. At Texas Wesleyan, you'll get the one-on-one -on -one attention you need to succeed. Texas Wesleyan, small classes, big scholarships. Now that's smaller, smarter. Time has begun here at Scarborough Stadium, the oldest stadium in Anderson County. First opened up back in 1977, ironically, when the Wildcats played their first season of 11-man Texas high school football. And while we have this moment here at the HTO Halftime Refresh, let's check out our Texas College Student Spotlight for September of 2023. Hi, my name is Anasia Jefferson. My name is Asia Brown. My name is Tashara Johnson. My name is Roosevelt Williams. I serve as the 2023-2024 Miss Texas College. I am the Student Government Association President. I am the current 2023-2024 Miss UNCF. I am the 23-24 National Pay and Analytic President. I am a senior majoring in social work, and I'm from Jasper, Texas. I am a senior majoring in criminal justice. I am from Russ, Texas. I am a junior majoring in biology from Montgomery, Alabama. I am a junior majoring in business administration from Houston, Texas. My favorite thing about Texas college is how family oriented the college is. Everyone is somebody. You get to know your professors more on hands-on. You get to know your presidents and vice presidents. Texas college is a tight-knit community. Everyone just welcome me in. 
let me know that I was home. When you first step foot onto the campus, someone, a faculty member, a janitor, even the security guard, someone will acknowledge you being here. They're gonna ask you different questions because everyone knows familiar faces. The family atmosphere, the hands-on experiences you get to have with faculty and staff, and then the multiple organizations that I've been a part of and had the chance to grow at Texas College. The opportunities afforded to me while being able to further my softball career, pledge Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, and become one of the campus queens, Miss UNCF 2023-24. I've been able to grow here at Texas College mentally, physically, spiritually, and academically because of the opportunities. The motto here at Texas College is give the students light and they will find their way. And attending a college like Texas College, they do give you the light. Here back in the HTO broadcast booth for our HTO halftime refresh. And once again, we're going to hear from our own Nick Jordan. Here at the halfway mark of the Battle of FM 59 between the Bobcats and Wildcats, our own Nick Jordan has something on his mind about the current state of football, at least at the youth level. It's the latest edition of Nick's Notes presented by Tinsley Title. As a public address announcer, I get the privilege to see lots of football games at this time of year. Recently, I've been announcing 7th and 8th grade games. So far, I've been disappointed with how athletes at that age act and conduct themselves on the field. In the last weeks, I've seen several targeting calls with blows to the helmet and hitting defenseless players. Personal fouls are on the rise. It's hard to imagine that coaches are teaching these skills, but I've seen fans and some coaches applauding these hits. I've seen a dramatic increase in the face mask penalties, and I'm not just talking about grabbing the face mask to make a tackle, but grabbing the face mask and ripping the helmet off of a player and then throwing it, the helmet down. Please, these are 7th and 8th grade players. Teach them the fundamentals of football, how to tackle properly, how to throw, catch, and most of all, have respect for the other team. You may not like them, but show respect to your opponents. I worry about these players as they get older and continue to play and don't learn the real game of football. If they're not taught how the, play, how the game is played, we will continue to see players injured or worse when an official makes a call against them and they attack a referee as we saw several years ago on a high school game on TV. Yes, football is a physical sport and you have to accept the risks of playing, but you shouldn't have to worry about illegal hits and actions that take away from the fun of the game. For Antler Sports Network, this is Nick Jordan. My name is Chance Decody, and I'm the pre-owned sales manager at Maritz Chevrolet. The Maritz Promise is a lifetime warranty on the engine and transmission that's given to you at no cost. It's good for in the lifetime as long as you own the vehicle. As long as the car is 10 years old or newer and has under 100,000 miles when you buy it, it's going to come with that. It's going to cover everything, all your lubricated parts that's part of your engine or your transmission. Come see us today at Maritz Chevrolet, home of the Maritz Promise. Not only is it going to give you a lifetime warranty, it's going to give you peace of mind and confidence to buy with us. My name is Nathan LeMaster, I'm from Tyler, Texas, and here I have the Pill Puncher. This device, ladies and gentlemen, will help you get into pill packages very easily, sanitarily, and effectively. All you gotta do is take the point, put the puncture the back, right there, take the device, put it over the pill, like so, punk, push it down, drops it into the reservoir, and there you go, folks. Why make this harder on yourselves? Save your fingers and get your pill puncher today. Find your support system. At Texas Wesleyan, you'll get the one-on-one -on -one attention you need to succeed. Texas Wesleyan, small classes, big scholarships. Now that's smaller, smarter.
halftime here at the home of the Wildcats. It is also halftime across East Texas. Let's go look at some East Texas scores by classification. Both will the main 6A school in East Texas, that being the Red Raiders of Tyler Legacy, currently on an off week along with their Tyler counterparts of the Lions at Tyler High. Starting at 5A, Texas High over Mount Pleasant by a score of 14 to 7. That game is still in the first. Pine Tree Nacogdoches knotted up at 7 in the second quarter. Hallsville and Marshall, the Bobcats down 21 to 14. Rusk in center. Center, one of the most explosive offenses in the state. Only up on the Eagles of Rusk by one. That score in the first quarter being up 14 to 13. Canton and Van in a district matchup. The Vandals up 28 to 3 in the second quarter. Car Carthage blanking out Browns well 35 to nothing. We are scoreless in New Chapel Hill as the Wildcats and the Bulldogs of Tyler Chapel Hill are knotted up at zero in the second quarter. Kilgore up on Jacksonville 21 to nothing in the first and our final 4A school for a score. Lindale over Athens 6 0 in the first quarter. Moving down now to 3A. Danger Field currently up on the Mustangs of Hugh Springs 21 to nothing. Winsboro walloping Commerce. Second quarter to score. That score is 52 to 7. The Bulldogs equipment up on Troop 14 to 2 in the second quarter. Arb defeating Winona that game in the second period 15 to 7. Fairfield currently not able to put up any points against another fellow Malakoff area team. This is the Malakoff Tigers up 13 to nothing in period number two. And Pottsboro currently up on Mineola in the second, 41 to 14. Finally going to two-way, Mount Enterprise up on the Trojans of All Saints Episcopal. Those same Trojans that fell to crossroads earlier in the season, they're down to Mount Enterprise, so 46 to eight in the second. The Timpson Bears currently number one in the state, up on St. Augustine, 44 to nothing. That's homecoming currently this week for the Bears of Timpson. Joaquin down against Garrison in the second. It's 42 to 14. Frankston right down the road from us here in Anderson County. Up on the lines of Union Grove in the second, 34 to seven. Big Sandy up on Orr City, 21 to 14. Beckville up on Hawkins, 38 to six. And finally, our last score, Alba Golden, down at 20 to nothing against Honey Grove in the second. We'll take one more four minute break. We'll take another four minute break. Myself and my broadcast partner, Matthew and Miles, will discuss what we liked in the, in the first half of action. Back after this on the Antler Sports Network. My name is Chance Decody, and I'm the pre owned sales manager at Maritz Chevrolet. The Maritz Promise is a lifetime warranty on the engine and transmission that's given to you at no cost. It's good for the lifetime as long as you own the vehicle. As long as the car is 10 years old or newer and has under 100,000 miles when you buy it, it's going to come with that. It's going to cover everything, all your lubricated parts that's part of your engine or your transmission. Come see us today at Maritz Chevrolet, home of the Maritz Promise. Not only is it going to give you a lifetime warranty, it's going to give you peace of mind and confidence to buy with us. My name is Nathan LeMaster. I'm from Tyler, Texas, and here I have the Pill Puncher. This device, ladies and gentlemen, will help you get into pill packages very easily, sanitarily, and effectively. All you got to do is take the point, put the puncture the back, right there, take the device, put it over the pill, like so, punk, push it down, drops it into the reservoir, and there you go, folks. Why make this harder on yourselves? Save your fingers and get your pill puncher today. Find your support system. At Texas Wesleyan, you'll get the one-on-one -on -one attention you need to succeed. Texas Wesleyan, small classes, big scholarships. Now that's smaller, smarter.
back at the half as both teams of already getting their bands on and off the field performing for our halfway pleasure it's Cayuga 24 crossroads 14. Jared Jones Matthew Hermans in the booth with you for our scouting report game of the week it's rivalry night as the battle of FM 59 continues Matthew both of these teams separated by a mere seven minutes of drive time you can definitely see the intensity in the I guess you could say bad blood that both of these teams share I feel like that's a fair assessment yeah, I'd say it's a fair assessment, but um, this this game has been very entertaining so far, and 10 points is nothing is short of a comeback. I mean, two drives less than one quarter can easily get the Bobcats back in this game, and it is very important that they the Bobcats come out swinging, and the Wildcats also come out swinging there two high-powered offensive teams and you want to make sure that the Bobcats are able to have that quarterback receiver connection to be able to keep this offense flowing because that's the most important part towards the end of the half they weren't able to get that quarterback receiver connection going which ended up leading to them not being able to score and make it a one score game but that is okay because they still have the offensive star power to be able to make this a comeback and tie this game up but speaking of offensive star power we got the Wildcats who have been crushing it on all cylinders. They've they've had the run game, the defense. They have multiple playmakers on offense that have been able to be unstoppable. You could say. I mean, the, each and every running back that they have, the quarterback that they have, the defense hasn't been able to make a decision to be able to stop them. It's been very impressive, and I'm excited to see what the second half has to hold. Now, when you talk about that Bobcat comeback. It's going to be up to the quarterback, Riley Brown. Brown has pretty much been the straw that serves the drink. I hate to use a good old-fashioned sports cliche there. But he's been their most important aspect on offense. Now, if Crossroads wants to get back in the game, Brown is going to have to be a, that locker room leader that we would expect a quarterback or a single caller to be. Toxers receivers, keep them engaged, keep them positive, and keep going to them most importantly. If you're a receiver, you dropped a couple of passes. The rest of this receiving core has been a pretty long night for you. It's been all run game for the Bobcats, All right, but real quick. still plenty of time to, to get back into this one. We have just a couple of minutes. We're going to take a four-minute break. Uh, back after this Bobby on the Antler Trail Sports Network. My name is Chance Decody, and I'm the pre-owned sales manager at Maritz Chevrolet. The Maritz Promise is a lifetime warranty on the engine and transmission that's given to you at no cost. It's good for in the lifetime as long as you own the vehicle. As long as the car is 10 years old or newer and has under 100,000 miles when you buy it, it's going to come with that. It's going to cover everything, all your lubricated parts that's part of your engine or your transmission. Come see us today at Maritz Chevrolet, home of the Maritz Promise. Not only is it going to give you a lifetime warranty, it's going to give you peace of mind and confidence to buy with us. My name is Nathan LeMaster. I'm from Tyler, Texas, and here I have the Pill Puncher. This device, ladies and gentlemen, will help you get into pill packages very easily, sanitarily, and effectively. All you got to do is take the point, put the puncture the back, right there. Take the device, put it over the pill, like so, pump, push it down, drops it into the reservoir, and there you go, folks. Why make this harder on yourselves? Save your fingers and get your pill puncher today. Find your support system at Texas Wesleyan. You'll get the one-on-one -on -one attention you need to succeed. Texas Wesleyan, small classes, big scholarships. Now that's smaller, smarter.
the opening Here we go. The We've half. already gone through halftime. Two quarters of play are in the books. We have one more half of football to decide a winner here tonight. It's the Wildcats and Bobcats. Battle of FM 59, a rivalry that dates back, back to 1987. Crossroads won the first matchup. We've got an onside kick to get things going. But is it going to get anywhere? Going to be hauled in by Braden Hart. Hart, that's the second time he's been able to recover an onside kick. Good to see he's quick on his toes. Yeah, you can say so. Um, that's that's something I did not notice, but I guess you can say it's impressive. Onside kicks, kicks can be hard to recover, especially with the bounces that the football can take at times. But it is, it is very important that the Bobcats were able to get the ball back this half, and they hopefully were able to tune some of the mistakes they might have made the first half, and we'll see if they can make a statement on this first drive of the game, or the half, excuse me. The Bobcats will take over first and 10. Ball is on the 47-yard line. Only one second, second has gone off, and you talk about the importance of hauling in offside kicks. Last week, our broadcast between the Nacogdoches Dragons and the White House Wildcats with a prime example is coming out of the gate. The first run of the game is going to be Tiller. Tiller breaks free. He's got space. One more man to beat in the end zone. Touchdown. That's what you call a statement by the Bobcats. I think I said at half that it would take less than a quarter that could uh, shrink the score between the Bobcats and the Wildcats. And... If anything, it took less than 20 seconds. Um, it's a one-score game now, and the Bobcats really did make a statement. The running back did a really good job following his blockers, having the speed to be able to get through the hole, and now it looks like they are going for two, if I'm not mistaken. Definitely will want to go for two here. The 53-yard touchdown run from Tiller. Our longest touchdown from scrimmage so far this game. We're not even a good 15 seconds out of the out of the hat, both teams fresh out of the locker room, so they'll probably have an extra little bit of water. But now the two-point conversion is unsuccessful as well. Okay, you want fireworks? We got them after the 53, after the 53-yard tiller touchdown. We got ourselves a ball game. It's 24-20. Crossroads responds back after this on the Antler Sports Network. Can you announce the name of the business on this? Chief? Name of the business. Uh, yo, yo, Yosemite, Yosemite, Yosemite roofing, or Yos, Yos me, Yosemite roofing, Yose, Yose might, Yose might. Hey guys, it's Josiah with Yosemite roofing, and we don't care what you call us as long as you call us. It was a 53-yard Tiller touchdown that gives us our current score. It's 24 to 20, and Matthew, you're two for two on predictions. You predicted the first penalty over the first quarter, and you predicted that the Bobcats would come out of the locker room swinging, and that's exactly what we've seen to open up quarter number three. With the Bobcats the first half, I feel like the Wildcats' defense was – of course, fully focused on the quarterback and his abilities. And when you come out as a team, especially the Bobcats, you need someone else to step up. And I didn't think it would be that quick, but the running back did what he needed to do, stepped up, and now we'll see how the Bobcats do on defense. After the Tiller touchdown, the, the Wildcats will take the opening kick. Going up the middle, has a little bit of space, breaking one more tackle, but the touchdown saving tackles made by Grand Story. As now Cayuga will have first and ten. And now if you're Cayuga, you're still up four. But Bobcats coming out of the break, a big time touchdown. Definitely gonna have a little bit of extra swagger, I'd say. Now for the Wildcats, just take your time, drive down the field, get a nice easy touchdown. What do you think, Matthew? Yeah, you don't want that touchdown by the Bobcats to really ruin your momentum you had going into the half. So I would suggest don't think about it. Continue with what's working, and you'll see success going that way. Here's what's working. It's been the Jacoby Brown show, but Brown gets shut down. He's going to get no gain. No, they're going to say he got about two. Check that. He's going to get a game of three. Roberts is on the tackle. That It's a gain of four. That'll make it second and six. 
Have they passed it once this game? I'm trying to think if we've seen a passing attempt from the Wildcats in this contest. We'll have to check back in a moment. 11 minutes remaining. It's a pitch to the outside to Brown. Brown's got ahead of steam. Gets the first down and still got more. Pretty good game. That's going to be a gain of about 11. And that'll move the chains first and 10. Brown is pretty much picking up exactly where he left off from the first half. Of course, you want to give it to your playmakers. And I think that's the farthest throw the quarterback's made all the game was that toss to Brown. And obviously, he's, he's, he's the guy you want to give it to because he's been unstoppable all game. Especially when you give him that downhill speed. Very Tyreek Hill-esque. We've seen the Dolphins put Hill in a lot of motion to start off the season. And the Wildcats have pretty much done the exact same thing with Jacoby Brown, the senior. You can't teach patience, and that's something he has that is very impressive. Up the middle, on the handoff, is Peckham. Peckham takes a spin, driving, holds on to the football. And that'll move the chains yet again, but there is a flag. Looks like that might have been holding and would be very disappointing if it were to bring it the ball back. Great fake handoff from the quarterback, Douglas, and Beckham taking multiple Bobcats. The first one to get the hit was Ethan Smith, number 33. And it looks like they are not moving forward to where he was down, so unfortunately. Holding penalty called against the Bobcats. Oh, excuse me, against the Wildcats. Got us a cat fight here, so could be a little bit of a mix-up, but it seems that that's a massive penalty that'll bring them back. Not to mention I'm three for three, but... <laughs> Had to get that in there, didn't you? Of course, of course, but... You're first down at a quarter mile, but you got so many playmakers that you can easily in three downs be able to get the first down or four downs because you know they're the team to type to go for it so here's another toss brown on the outside has room gets to the original line of scrimmage moves the chains first down in ten might as well get the first down again i mean brown's just that guy right now and just completely unstoppable honestly if i were the bobcats i I wouldn't know what to tell my defense at this point, but pray and pray and wrap up. That's all. Maybe even just completely sell out to them. But as you said at the half and in the early earlier stages with 10-06 remaining to go in this third, you mentioned they have so many playmakers. You can't really just sell out to one particular guy without leaving the door open for the rest of this Wildcat offense to strike. Exactly. You got three guys in the backfield right now that can all run the ball. On the toss is Jenkins. Jenkins might have gained about eight, and he did. Another big time game by the Wildcats. They're getting their yards in bunches, and they're getting them on bang bang plays. Seems like that same tenacity we've seen from the Cayuga offense is back on full display coming into the second half with 940 remaining. And no fatigue is really shown with the Wildcats. I think. The guys moving the chains are probably more tired than the actual team. But because <laughs> it's clear the, these guys are moving the chains and doing it quickly. Here's the second and short. That's a handoff. Up the middle again, up to Peckham. Peckham gets the first down. He is going to gain five and move the chains yet again. I feel like we've said that a lot this evening. Move the chains, move the chains, move the chains. That could be our... Our set of the day. How many times did we say move the chains from the very first offensive drive up to the end of the game? Or, can be interesting. or quarter mile. There's been a lot of flags thrown this game um, that have set both teams back. So, But really, we haven't seen a penalty become a detriment to either team's offensive drive, at least for that respective possession. With 9.15. Remaining in quarter number three. Clock is rolling. And if anything, that's complimenting the offense, showing that no matter how far you set them back, that they're just going to get that first down again. That's it's, that's all it is. Hand off to Jenkins. Jenkins initially gets hit after gaining four, but it's going to gain four more. Now brings up second and short again for the Wildcats. It's the second time they faced a second and short. I'd call it about two to go, I'd eye it. With 8.50 remaining, they'll check that they're going to call it second and three. Oliver Tiller on that tackle. That is his third tackle of the game. So he has a touchdown and multiple tackles. A man of many trades, Tiller is. Impressive game so far, but you want 
his productivity to relay to the rest of the defense as well as there's another first down. It's Jacoby Brown with a gain of five. That is already his second first down of the opening drive of the second half for the Wildcats. Clock now instructed to roll. Eight minutes, 20 seconds running in this one. The Wildcats are already taking about four minutes in this opening drive and have pretty much gone the length of the field. Had a penalty earlier on that after a hold that made it first and 20, but Brown was able to get a carry of about 23. And now the Wildcats are knocking on the door of the Bobcat red zone. Eight minutes now remaining. They approach the line of scrimmage. In under center is Douglas. He has a tight end, two backs, and a receiver to the far side. It's going to be a handoff of the middle yet again to Peckham. Peckham breaks free, has space, gets brought down at about the 10. But he's going to be short maybe of the first down. Nope, they tell him to move the chains again. That's first down number five of this drive. It's looking like the Bobcats are having or str struggling trying to tackle I mean a lot of these guys have been able to gain extra yards and it is second and short he was not able to get the first down but it seems like the Bobcats have had trouble stopping and getting these tackles that are much needed on defense and the Wildcats and they're not in any rush they're, they're they have all the time in the world they're up and it looks like they're knocking on the doorstep of another touchdown handoff to the man Brown again he gets fun but not before he gains three Move the chains yet again. He gets alligator rolled, but he might have actually gained a yard because of that. If we as we take another look on the Circle M Crawfish instant replay, just another impressive run and being able to get them extra yards that differentiate the second and short and first down. First and goal for the Wildcats. The Wildcats in their gold tops, white bottoms, black helmets with the shining gold and white piping across the center of the helmet. 11 seconds on the play clock. Now within the dime seconds. 6.40 remaining in quarter number three. Douglas in the under center yet again. It's a toss to the outside to Jenkins. Jenkins pushes through. He's going to gain a solid amount. I'll call it about seven. And now the ball will be on the one yard line, second and goal. The Wildcats came out really quick in the first half and they're taking their sweet time this second half, showing that Though the Bobcats did score a touchdown, that they're still calm, composed, and ready to run the clock if they need to. You know what I mean? Brett Zamzow and the rest of this Bobcat team are on pace if they keep their current scoring to have their eighth season of scoring over 250 points all time. Turn to the outside is Douglas Sintel. Touchdown. Wildcats, and Cayuga strikes yet again. Touchdown, Wildcats. Not only great fake by the quarterback, but impressive block by the receiver. I think that was number five, Cash Dillo. Cash with a money block, how's that? I was trying to think of something, but you beat me to it, Jared. When you have this kind of an offense, you have to be about as quick on your toes as the Bobcat defense. And it looks like it's going to be yet again two-point conversion time for Cayuga. Douglas, under center, handoff, up the middle of Jenkins. Jenkins into the end zone, converts it for two. Tack on two more, and we're back to a double digit game. After the quarterback keeper for Jenkins, oh, excuse me, for Douglas, that expands the Wildcat lead. Cayuga 32, Crossroads 20, back after this on the Antler Sports Network. Everything at Pelche Key and Tyler, we're tough, never quit. After the double touchdown run, the Cayuga lead is back to double digits. Now the score sitting at the Wildcats 32. The Bobcats, 20. Battle of FM 59. 
Oldest stadium in Anderson County opening back in 1977. Official capacity after the 2009 renovations that added the away stand, 1,888 here at Scarborough Stadium. Here to boot things off yet again as the Bobcats catch it initially. Now it's going to be at the 35, up the middle of Story. Story crosses midfield. No flags, and it seems like outside of that holding, we haven't seen many flags in the early stages of the second half. Whether the referees decided to chill out on the flags or the teams decided to talk about it and chill out on the play calls, I really feel like this has been a clean half so far, and it should be interesting to see how the Bobcats come out. Um, they were able to, they were able to have a good first drive, but consistency has been a slight issue this game with the Bobcats. So we're gonna have to see if they are able to come out and score again. Only needing 50 yards off that kick return, and we will see if they're able to do what they did last drive again. We're gonna see if they're able to keep that consistency off to, off to, to, to start this uh, drive. Excuse me. The Wildcats on that last offensive drive pretty much took the one half of the third quarter away. Let's see how the Bobcats respond. High snap is hauled in by Brown. Brown rolling out to his right, looking along the hashes, directing traffic at the numbers. He's pumped out of bounds at about the 45-yard line. That tackle is made by Jaden Davis. As Brown looks like he might have had something downfield, was trying to direct traffic, but was unable to find his receiver, find the guy that he intended to throw the ball to. Instead, we'll have to settle for a gain of five. That brings up second down. It seems, like, it seems like most of, most of the time Brown has rolled out of the pocket. It seems like his, he's just not been able to have a connection with his receivers, but it's his legs that's really helped him gain those extra yards that are needed. After the rush, official marking makes it second and four. 544 remaining. Wildcats up 32 to 20 in the Battle of FM 59. Quick snap, handoff, up the middle to Tiller. Tiller gets stuffed. He might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. No, they'll give him a yard with five and a half left to go. And this is how Cayuga has been able to defeat so many teams, especially rush-heavy teams. You wear them down, you come out of the half. They get punched them out early, but the Wildcats punch back directly, and now it seems like they're completely selling on the run and doing it with perfect execution. Not to mention, it looks like the Wildcats have watched a lot of film. I mean, they've been on these reads, and they have been very effective on defense so far, holding them only to 20 points, which seems like, which seems not, which seems minimal to what seems like such an explosive offense. The Bobcats scoring 35 points a game and allowing 18. Here's a quick pass. It's complete to Jocelyn. Jocelyn, big time move. Gets bumped, almost gets bumped out of bounds, but he's down at about the 30. That's going to be a massive gain, a gain of about 12. Move the chains first and 10, crossroads. Now, if you're Brown, that's more of a confidence booster, knowing that you're, you still have that connection with your receivers and you're able to get that down. I'm sure that's something we talked about uh, during halftime. And... That's just a confidence booster right there, and we'll see how many more times he's able to throw and connect with his receivers this drive. Most importantly, that gives Zam Zhao and the offensive staff a lot more flexibility in the playbook. You know the Wildcats are selling out on the run. They've been stopping the run more and more as the game goes on, but to be able to get that passing game going is definitely going to help your offense as the game transpires. 420 remaining, two on the play clock. They get it off. Here's Brown looking up, looking, steps up in the pockets, jukes to his left, still looking, rolling out along the numbers, going to take it himself gets out of bounds still still in bounds but gains about eight there he is yet again using his legs to extend plays I honestly thought Brown might have been dead to rights as he rolls out and as we take another look with the circle and crawfish instant replay I thought story might have been open on that play but Brown did a great job realizing that he might have not been able to get the throw in time and again just extending extending plays or extending the play, excuse me. That's going to make it a gain of seven. 4-10 remaining after the Brown run. Ball is at about the 25-yard line, marking up the 24. It's a handoff to Tiller. Tiller, he might have gained two, and he's going to be short. It'll be third and one. Beckham with the tackle. This third down isn't as important because of both these teams seem to go for it on fourth down every time. So you got two downs to get what looks like two yards or so. 
So we're going to be able to see what they end up doing here. I'm assuming they'll run the ball, but you never know. It, it'd be it'd be great to pass here and kind of throw the defense off. Three and a half remaining. Down and it's a keeper, keeper to the outside. Did Brown no, get there? The yes, he did. I would say so. As we're waiting for the officials to instruct them to move the chains, they're going to place the ball. Looks like it's right on the 20. Looks like he reached a little no, late. No, no game. Brown got nowhere on that one. Interesting call. I think the knee touched the ground before he uh, tried to extend the ball. All right, here we go. Fourth and one. Three minutes remaining. This quarter has pretty much been gone in a blink of an eye. If I'm the Bobcats, I'm running that play again. It's another keeper. Draw. He got it. Right up the middle. This time, instead of the draw to the outside along the right tackle, Brown just goes right behind the guards and using his offensive line to move the chains and extend the drive. I know you can play replays, but if you could hear that replay, you could hear me say, if I were the Bobcats, I would run that play again, and that's exactly what they did. They're, Brown's too good. He's not gonna. He's not gonna let that happen twice. He knew what he did the first time that led to that mistake, and he uh, went by his blockers and was able to get the first down with ease. Well, Matthew, maybe Coach Zams, I want company might hire you on the Bobcat staff. Two forty remaining in quarter number three. I form here for the Bobcats. Quick pitch, fade ball, back in the end zone for Story. No, incomplete. Unfortunately, he had great positioning there to be able to catch the ball. It just went through the hands. Maybe a little bit of nerves, but. I'd, I'd still throw the ball. I mean, that was a good look. I I wouldn't think that he'd let that happen again either. So, Story definitely had the size advantage. Tristan Wilson, check that. Yes, indeed, that was Tristan Wilson in coverage. The incompletion makes it second and ten. We have two and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. It's like just a couple. And we have two and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. It's like just a couple seconds ago we were just at halftime. <laughs> Yeah, of course, and time's going by fast, which doesn't favor the Bobcats. But, again, they could score within a blink of an eye, so we'll see what happens. Tiller pass intended for story. No, yes, intended for story incomplete yet again. Check the replay there. It seems like it might have been barely out of the reach of story as he was unable to haul it in. As if we look every time Brown lets the football go, he has a bit of a windup that brings his shoulder a bit farther back behind the back of the earlobe, but he definitely gets the ball out with speed, so maybe a little bit too much mustard on that pass. As now, it's a big time third down for the Bobcats. Call that arm a blessing and a curse, you know what I mean? That, that quick release and then being able to have that just sometimes doesn't work out as he scrambles and it looks like he's able to get. Looking, reaches out, he's at the one. Did he get in? Far side official says he's into the end zone. He gets in for the score. As now we're gonna go straight to our Circle M Crawfish instant replays. We're gonna try to get a closer look. The knee appears to be down. I don't know. That's definitely going to be interesting. The knees appear to be in the air of Brown, but the ball is definitely across the plane when he reaches out. So the touchdown will stand and honestly appearing at the replay. I have to say that's a pretty great call from the officials, especially with such a short amount of time to make that call. Five on the play clock here for the PAT attempt. Brown in the gun this time, looking, has Tiller to his right, looking to pass, he gets it, his tip incomplete. And another unsuccessful two-point conversion for the Bobcats, but, however, it's a reaching out effort from Brown that puts the Bobcats back on the scoreboard. It's a scouting report game of the week, and a game of the week indeed, as the Wildcats still have the lead, 32-26. to Back in 30 seconds, this is Texas High School Football on the Antler Sports Network. At Tinsley Title, we're more than just a title company. We're your partners in securing your real estate dreams. Right in the heart of downtown Athens, our dedicated team guides you through every step of the title process. When you've found your dream home and you're ready to take the next step, that's where we come in. We've helped countless in Henderson County and surrounding areas, and we treat every single one of them like family. Whether you're a seasoned investor or a first-time buyer, your trust is our commitment. We're Tinsley Title, your partner every step of the way. After the round touchdown run, some would say that was a 
controversial run, a 50-50 call, as I'd like to say, as right before kickoff, Matthew, let's take another look at that play via the Circle M Crawfish instant replay. Seems like Brown stretched across as we look at it again. The initial tackle gets made at about the one, but right as he gets rolled down, he reaches out, knees are in the air. And by all means, by golly, that's a touchdown. In well, if you're Brown, you know that the mistake that you made on one of the third downs on that drive was not reaching the ball out before your knee hit the ground. So I'm sure he knew the importance of that going into that, uh, going into the end zone. And he was able to score, which was a great call by the ref. And we're gonna, we may look back at that play and realize how important that touchdown was. We're going to find out. Down to number nine. The Wildcats, Wildcats hauling Wildcats. the kickoff at about the 20, cuts across midfield. Jukes, pretty good juke movement. Isn't going to get much farther. That's going to be a kickoff return of maybe about six yards or so. And now it's first and 10 for Cayuga, whose last offensive drive lasted six minutes and 27 seconds. Again, patience. I mean, they did. This offense doesn't need to be fast. They don't need to be slow. They they play at their own pace, per se, and they're doing that perfectly, knowing they're up and knowing they're comfortable with the football, knowing they're secure with the football, continuing to run down that defense. I mean, they just play at their own pace, and it's very, very impressive that they're able to have these long drives and just continue to move the chains consistently. Two minutes remaining in this one. It's a pitch to the outside to Jenkins. Jenkins isn't going to get very far. He might have gone back to the original line of scrimmage. That's where officials will mark it. No game. And if you're the Bobcats, you need to try to rush this Ketuga Wildcat offense as much as you can with a minute 45 remaining in quarter number three. You don't want okay, you to take another six-minute drive because if a couple more of those, and this game will be over before you know it. And it sounds like we keep talking about the Bobcats defense, which is very unfortunate, but true. We cannot not keep talking about them because they are not able to stop what this Wildcat offense has going in. We will see what is happening now as a, a pitch, and as I say that, Pitch again. Amazing stop by the Bobcats. The Bobcats defense definitely holding firm, and this is exactly what you need, and that's going to be a very short gain. Maybe of about two. That'll bring up third and seven. Check that and make it third and six. Now it's just the waiting game. Very much appreciative support in the junior class. 54 seconds. On the game clock, 15 is showing on the play clock. Looks like we might have one or two more plays remaining in this quarter. And if you're looking at the Bobcat offense on the sideline, taking a break, get as much as you need because the sand is slowly falling out of the hourglass. Here's a third down. It's a pitch to the outside to Jenkins. Jenkins pretty much skips over a man. Pretty good game, but he's only going to get five. That'll make it short. It's fourth down. and. An easily manageable fourth down, as it looks like this could be the final play of quarter number three as Cayuga faces a fourth and one. If I'm the Wildcats, this is an easy decision. I'm going for it. However, the Bobcats have done a great job being able to prevent them to get this first down, but we will see how they do on this fourth and short. It looks like the Wildcats will not run another play. We play three minutes of football, only two, only 12 more minutes remaining in tonight's contest. Can the Bobcats last long enough in order to survive? In order to survive? Find out after this short timeout. This is a Scott Report Game of the Week on the Antler Sports Network. three quarters of football and only 12 minutes remain in the 2023 rendition 
of the Battle of FM 59. Cayuga up 32 to 26 here at Scarborough Stadium, open in 1997. And Matthew, if you're the Bobcats of Crossroads, right, it's desperation time. I mean, the Wildcats took their time. They didn't need to run a play right before the quarter ended. They're taking as much time as possible. And the Bobcats, they need to stop them right th or right here for a chance. And it looks like they, they did lost. not. Oh, it's, oh there's a it's fumble. Oh, the ball is out. Crossroads falls on the football, but was he marked down? Let's try to get a I, quick look at the replay I don't here. think so. We take another look. Oh, man. The ball might have came out by contact. As we try to take another look. Oh, that's another rough call, Matthew. I'm not 100% sure. Well, you're three, what, three or four for four on the night? This is your time. And it looks like they're going to say it will move the chains. First down. That's ten. very unfortunate. A play you might look back on if you're the Bobcats. That could have been the, that could possibly set up the final nail in the coffin. As a couple of more scores as Beckham gets the two yard gain. But you you still gotta force the Bobcat or the Wildcats, excuse me, to go roughly 50, 50 plus yards down the field and they still have time to let's say try to make the Wildcats make another mistake or so. So by no means is this game over. The Bobcats have played extremely well on this drive and just hope that they're able to get a stop here because that would be very detrimental to the game. Second and eight, hand off, up the middle to Jenkins. Jenkins gets spun, he's gonna gain one yard. It's third and long, third and eight, and uh-oh, here we go. Things are getting back chippy yet again. We saw a lot of bickering and back and forth early in the game, but it kind of seemed to subside as the game went on. And it seems like with 10.40 left to go, still a little bit of bad blood. Well, for this example, um, the defender tried to step over the what it looked like the offensive lineman, and the offensive lineman got up, and the defender flipped on his back. So they, they kind of a little, little little frustration there after someone just got flipped over. But step over one of the most disrespectful moves in sports. Here's the hand up up to Brown in the middle. Brown gets brought down by a couple of Bobcats still going. Holds onto the football. That big time tackle was made by Straight Myers. This is another big fourth down. I'm, I'm very impressed by the Bobcats defense. Extremely impressed how they were able to turn things around and get these so-called stops. They have definitely stepped up knowing the importance of this drive. Stops and deed is what the Bobcats need. Nine to 47 remaining in the contest. One possession game. The Wildcats facing fourth and two. Hand off, up the middle of Jenkins. Jenkins gets the outside, he's got space. It's a foot race. 20, 15, 10, five, go right into the end zone, touchdown. Touchdown, number two. This is the Bobcat strictly blitzing, expecting a run through uh, in the middle, and the Wildcats taking advantage of it to the run to the outside. There is no way they were catching up. Again, playmakers on playmakers, just an amazing play call by the Wildcats. Wildcats using the run game the same way they've used it all game long to continue and expand this lead. Now, barring the PAT, 38 to 26. So we wait the one after attempt. It's easily going to be yet another two point conversion. It's a pitch to the outside to Brown. Brown bobbles it, gets in the inside, steps his way into the end zone for two. And after the successful conversion, it's all Wildcats. With nine and a half minutes remaining in this one, the Wildcats have locked in and continue to expand the lead. After the Perkham touchdown, that's the Wildcats 40, Crossroads 26. Back after this on the Antler Sports Network.
everything. At Pelche Key and Tyler, we're tough, never quit. Reminder here with 9.30 remaining in the fourth quarter to tune in to ASN2 tomorrow as we have Sooner Athletic Conference College Football live from Stanford, Texas. It's the Steers of Texas College taking on the Stallions of, Stallions of North American tomorrow night. Pre-game of that contest beginning with the East Texas Benefits countdown to kickoff at 6.30 p.m. Central. On ASN2, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube page, the home of college football on the Antler Sports Network. Jared Jones, Matthew Hermans in the booth with you this evening for our scouting report game of the week. And Matthew, as we get ready for this kickoff, you don't have to be a football savant to say with this onside kick, it's been all Wildcats as it's hauled in by Price at about the 45. You can say it's been all Wildcats, but the Bobcats have been hanging on throughout, let's say, this half. They've been able to hang on, and again, if they score here, they'll still be hanging on. We might see another onside kick. Would that be like the fifth, sixth onside kick of the game? But the Wildcats have done a great job of commanding their lead and keeping their lead with the patience, presence, and poise they have as an offense. But the Bobcats have been able to hang on, so we'll see what they have to do on this drive. And I was talking about consistency in the first half being an issue for the Bobcats. They've scored back-to-back -back touchdowns, and let's see if we can make it three in a row. The Wildcats 1-1 one one here at Scarborough Stadium this season. Here is first and ten. Brown and company leading his Bobcat offense back onto the field. The running back is Tiller. He drops back. Looks to let it fly. Along the sideline, he's got Story picked off. What an interception. It's going the other way. Interception all in by Jenkins. And Matthew, I don't know about you, but I think we might have just seen play of the night. What a snag from Jenkins along the sideline. Yes, and it looks like there's a player down. No, he's good. But... No, that was an honestly that was an incredible route by the receiver and almost an incredible throw by the quarterback. But the defender ended up making the play. That was an incredible over the shoulder snag. Had to reach out for it essentially, and you know, big players make big plays, and that was honestly one of the biggest plays of the game, stopping that Bobcat offense who had scored twice in a row. You know, like I said, it was an amazing route. It was a fake screen, and then he went deep and they just couldn't make the connection. It was amazing play by the defender. If I were the Wildcats, I would be extremely proud of how they were able to play that. Personal foul. Illegal contact called. And it looks like the penalty will be declined. As the, even though it was a interception and penalty, Cayuga will take the football back when 9-17 remaining in this one. And if you're the Bobcats, that takes the wind out of your sails. Of course, and um, this isn't the first time that the Bobcats have had a call in their favor, but we will see what, oh, excuse me, the Wildcats have a call in their favor, but we will see how they, how they end up doing this drive. Peckham on the carry, he's gonna gain three. But we can make the statement, this game is not over whatsoever. The defense can still come up, and these are two teams that can score quickly. So we will see how the Bobcats' defense responds and how the Wildcats' offense remains patient, poised well, the, on this drive. Well, their opening drive in the first, well, the second half, they drove down the field and wasted six minutes, almost six and a half minutes. It's now facing the second and long. It's a handoff to Brown. Brown's got space. Gets to the outside, gets the first down, and more gets pushed out at about midfield. Tackle made by Brown, the quarterback, after that gain of about 13, call it 14. Boot chains, first down again. Making these defenders look silly all night, that's what he does. Straight playmakers on this Wildcats offense. It's, it's honestly extremely impressive. First and 10 ball is going to be placed at the 49-yard line. We've got push out of bounds while moving forward, so the clock will stop. I don't know if this is the first time you've covered this offense, but it's, it certainly won't be the last because of how impressive and entertaining this is to watch for the both of us. See what the officials were. Though the head official was talking again to the coaches over at the KU sideline. 
love to speak with Coach McGee after the game and see what was discussed because he's been, it definitely hasn't been happy. Douglas, the keeper, rolls to the outside. Flag is thrown at about the line of scrimmage, gets the first down, still battling inside the 20, gets bounced out of bounds at about the 17 yard line. But there is a flag right at midfield and it might have been something as we saw both linemen for both teams wrestling well after the play had gone past him. But now, flag right at the 50. This is, could be a big time call. Is now one of the, I believe that's the line judge, is speaking with Zach Johnson of the Wildcats. Now breaks away. Now he's talking to Coach Maggie on the sideline, and Coach Maggie is not happy again. He's had a pretty rough evening with these officials. I sure hope there's something in the fridge when he gets home to have something positive because he seems like he has been livid all evening long. I feel like both coaches have, and that's just the officials making sure this game is safe and fair with this rivalry that's going on. Chop block penalty called against the Wildcats, and it seems that there is an injured Bobcat down on the far sideline. He gets tended to. We'll take a short break. Back in 30 seconds, this is Texas High School Football on the Antler Sports Network. At Tinsley Title, we're more than just a title company. We're your partners in securing your real estate dreams. Right in the heart of downtown Athens, our dedicated team guides you through every step of the title process. When you've found your dream home and you're ready to take the next step, that's where we come in. We've helped countless in Henderson County and surrounding areas, and we treat every single one of them like family. Whether you're a seasoned investor or a first-time buyer, your trust is our commitment. We're Tinsley Title, your partner every step of the way. The Bobcats with not a lot of time. This interception pretty much set it all up. Well, 8.23 remaining in this one. It's 40 to 26. And the Crossroads Bobcats have to be wondering what more is it going to take in order to get a firm grasp of this Cayuga Lee. Jared Jones, Matthew Hermans in the booth with you. Another reminder that next week, well, excuse me, tomorrow night, We'll have another presentation of college football on the Antler Sports Network. As the Steers of Texas College head down to Houston to take on the Stallions of North American in an all Sooner Athletic Conference matchup. Myself and Justin Jackson will be in the booth for that one. The East Texas Benefits Countdown to kickoff gets us going at 6.30 p.m. It's Steer Football presented by Yosemite Roofing, the GOAT of Roofing. After the penalty, it's going to be first down in a country mile after the chop block. Hand off to Jenkins. It's going to get very far. He maybe got back to the original line of scrimmage, and that's what they're going to mark it. And if you're crossroads, we want it. We always try to look for opportunities, not just as broadcasters watching the game, but you know the coaching staff is looking and counting their pennies while they can, seeing when can we take advantage, when can we try to strike against this Wildcat team. And Matthew, I don't know about you, but this is the perfect opportunity. They got them deep in their own territory. It's second and 25, but the clock is rolling. Got to execute now. You have around... 7 740 on the clock and this would be the perfect opportunity to get a stop if there were one so we will have to see as round again on the handoff stiff storms a mess this storms two crossing midfield gets brought down at the 40 ball comes out crossroads said they might have the football as it seems like a bobcat has it this is going to be interesting as we look again as Brown stiffs arms two defenders in one run. That's a grown man run. As the line judges still hasn't made an official call just yet, but there is a flag on the far side right at about the 42 yard line. So this decision time, you have a possible turnover and a flag. The refs are definitely getting their money's worth tonight. They've had a lot of action to call in this ball game as now looks like they'll talk things over at about the 41. Well, a lot to unfold. You got to determine where the flag was, what happened, and then whether that was a fumble. Um, impressive run. Just don't know if he ended up losing the ball or not. And that's something that we don't know yet and that they're going to talk about, and we will let you know as soon as possible. As we take another look at the replay here, it seems like the ball, if it was taken out at all, 
to force a turnover. It was stripped on the turn as Brown got rolled got rolled down at about the 40. Another major 50-50 call. That play down there from Brown a couple drives ago into the end zone was a 50-50 call. Now this fumble. There's a lot of 50-50 calls, but if you're the Bobcats, you cannot let the referees determine how you lose or win this game. So you got to hope that the calls go your way, and if not, you're going to have to make sure you make those plays that are going to – that are for sure plays. But we will see what the call is. As we try to get yet another look and with our Circle M Crawfish instant replay, I don't know. Upon further – review at least from our angle Brown Riley Brown was able to spin Jacoby Brown around the ball came out right before the right elbow of Jacoby Brown came down and a knee didn't come down at all but here's the official call from the head official penalty against the Bobcats is declined no fumble that wow. That All right. Very interesting. I, I thought he was down, but I was not able to see the replay. But incredible run. We, we, we need to make sure that that's being said. That was an incredible run. And Brown stiff arming two people. Now, looking at a third and one, it's a keeper up the middle for Douglas. Douglas gets the push, gets the first down, and more. Again on the tackle, the quarterback for Crossroads, that's Riley Brown. Brown on this game not only has had a pretty solid running and passing performance, but he has six tackles on the game already. Yes, and I think it's really interesting because this newfound high school football that's going on in Texas, it, there's so much more running. Like, the, the pass completions, I can count on one hand. There's been so much dominant running, and it's been very impressive to see how these offenses have been able to utilize their playmakers through the run game just alone. Lone receiver on the far side is Brady Harrison. Two tight ends. <laughs> Douglas in the gun. It's a toss out to the outside to Peckham. Peckham gets spun, brought down, but not before gaining one multiple Bobcats on the tackle. The one to get the initial push was Cameron Reel. Reel gets his first tackle of the game, and that'll bring up second and long. No, make that second and about nine. Have we still yet decided if the Wildcats have passed the ball yet? I don't think so. 640 remaining in this contest. It's second and nine after the gain of one. Douglas trots back out to address his offense as Harrison rolls out to his eyes outside to be the lone receiver. Six and a half minutes remaining in this one. Okay, you go up 40 to 26. Clock still rolling. Six seconds on the play clock. Douglas in the gun now with the back to his right. He fakes the handoff. He's going to keep it in sub. Rolls up around the hash. He gets up the middle, cuts up field, and has space. Maybe Warren made a big gets brought down, but now before he crosses into the crossroads red zone on the tackle and coming up a bit shaky was Graham Story, and they're trying to rush out a training team, and we're going to take a timeout, and he gets treated to back after this timeout on the Antler Sports Network. As we take another look at that Jacoby Brown run from earlier in the drive via our Circle M Crawfish instant replay, I don't know. I'm still not 100% sure if Riley Brown was able to strip the football out in time. The ball seems to pop up right after the initial hit. But either way, the drive continues. It's first down and 10. Peckham. Spins up the middle, bounces out to his left, and he's going to get a pretty solid gain. And the clock will stop. Again, that 
they might have saw something that we didn't. That's why they deferred with each and every official down there. And I'm sure, I'm sure they made the right call. Not too sure. Honestly, I could see that call going either way, but we have the joy of having replay, but the officials don't. Interesting thing about the UIL State Football Championships instant replay was implemented throughout every game for every classification. Well, you never want to get a call wrong, of course, and uh, you know, with uh, not every team can have the blessing of being able to get instant replays, but I do trust the officials as they are obviously have experience and a much better view than we do. Yeah, of course, of course, we're, we're up here in air. We're up here in air conditioning. I don't know about you, but I like that a little bit more. Here's a handoff up to Brown again. Brown explodes after the handoff goes right up the middle, right down Main Street and into the Anderson County Clerk's office. And now that's going to be a gain of about four. Check that. Make that a gain of five. It's third and one. This Wildcat team is the definition of if it isn't broke, do not even try to fix it because they have not at all. Well, the order machine in this rushing attack has been with a 445 still remaining in this one. The clock is rolling. You have to think if the Wildcats could punch it in the end zone here, that might be the, the final nail in the coffin. Not the time. The clock is not on the Bobcat side. Three seconds on the plate clock. They get it off. It's a keeper. To the outside with it is Douglas. Douglas turns the corner. Jukes and does with a pylon in zone. Did he get in? No, he's short at the one yard line. For a slight second, I thought he was going to pass it there, but I should have known. What an amazing run by the quarterback. I mean, just another playmaker. It's, it's, it's really impressive how consistent this team is with running the football. Either way, Douglas' run will not be in vain. Result of the run is going to be first and goal from the one-yard line. So now this is picture-perfect position. You pretty much have four tries to get a yard. And if we know anything about this KU running attack, they can get that pretty easily. Clock still running. Seven seconds on the play clock. Four minutes, ten seconds left in this contest. Cayuga looking for the dagger. Hand off. Up the middle into Jenkins. He's in. Touchdown, Wildcats. And that might have been the straw to break the camel's back and finish off this battle of FM 59 for 2023. What a run. One yard rush for Jenkins. And that might have sealed the deal. Yeah, of course, anything can happen in football, but the. Uh, Wildcats have a very comfortable lead and looking like they will end up closing this one out. But again, we'll have to see. I mean, I've, I've seen I've seen more surprising things happen in football, so we'll have to see. But the Wildcats are just, again, very impressive with all the playmakers that they do have. Are waiting for the PAT attempt. It's a pitch toss to the outside to Brown. Brown has room and he's in yet again. Who else? Who else? As he says, he's too little. And the league in the lead might just be too great. Take another look at that instant replay brought to you by Circle and Crawfish. The Wildcats expand the lead. Short timeout. Back after this in 30 seconds. It's K. You go 48. Crossroads 26. 30 second timeout after this on the Antler Sports Network. Everything at Pell Shake Key and Tyler, we're tough, never quit. Taking another look at the touchdown run that expanded the Wildcat lead, and that is giving us our current score. The Wildcats up 48 to 26 against the visiting rival Bobcats of Crossroads. Kickoff is up and away, not a lot of distance at all. It's hauled in at about the 40 and by story. Story bounces off to the outside, flag thrown right at midfield. Eventually gets brought down. That's going to be a kickoff return of about eight yards, and there's still laundry on the field. I think we've seen the referee pass the flag more than we've seen either quarterback pass the football. 
We have a stat track on how many yards the flag has thrown tonight. We have all the Amazon cloud stats and all the advanced stats of Miles Rower. How about how fast the flag gets thrown? How about that? How's that for an advanced stat? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what's in the water here in Cayuga, Texas. The, the 2009 state champion, so championship pedigree definitely might be in the nutrition facts. That penalty against Malakoff, well, against Crossroads. Crossroads located just outside of Malakoff. UIL identifies them officially as Malakoff Crossroads High School, similarly how Chapel Hill gets identified as Tyler Chapel Hill. But speaking with some upper administration, they want to be referred to as Crossroads, plain and simple. 357, here's a handoff up the middle to Tiller, and Tiller's going to get nowhere. He got not a single yard on that run, and now it just seems like fatigue is finally settling in with 340 remaining in the game. Just staying engaged. It's it's going to take a lot. It's, it, 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 it'll, it'll take a, a lot right now. Second and nine. They gave him a yard. Ball is at the 39-yard line. Quick pitch. Catch outside to Story. Story makes a move. Gets brought down about the 45, but he's going to be short. That's a gain of about seven. And now it makes it third and short. This is a pretty big third down. If you want to even think about making a comeback, even though the Bobcats have all three timeouts, if you want to make a comeback, the time is now. Yeah, of course, with the time constantly going down, we're just under three minutes. But uh, I'd, I'd give it Story again. Story seems to be the number one receiver in this offense, and he's very shifty and really impressive. I think he had only dropped one, one pass, but we'll see what they end up doing here. Eye formation here for the Bobcats. As we get ready to cross the three and a half minute mark, two and a half minute mark, excuse me. Hand off up the middle to Tiller. Tiller, it might be just short. No official steps to his right, and it will move the chains. First down and 10. Now, that's what I would call an interesting call. Now, you see the official was walking right at about the 46 yard line, then took a slide over to his right and said it was a first down. Might have been some extra forward progress. 2.20 <laughs> remaining in this ball game. Once again, the Bobcats are back in the I-4. Under center is going to be Brown. Brown fakes the handoff, looking across the middle, lines up, throws. Oh, almost caught. Store the intended receiver, but incomplete as the Wildcats secondary strikes again. Slightly underthrown. That could have been easily picked off by the Wildcats and would have sealed the deal and ended, ended the game, but I guess the quarterback got a lucky break. Um, maybe maybe that's as far as he can throw. Maybe he just mistimed it, but he'll get another shot at it this this uh, next, next down. And most importantly, the clock is stopped. 2-0-4. That might, give you, might result in another extra second or two. Both teams have all three of their timeouts. Back in the eye again are the Bobcats. Handoff out to Tiller. Tiller bounces out, but he gets tackled well behind the line. He's going to lose a yard. As the stop was made by number two, Witt Jenkins. Minute 50. Clock is moving after the loss. That makes it third and 11. Interesting play, Con. It makes you wonder if the Bobcats might have just, they are waiting for the clock to run out as well. They might have thrown the white towel, per se. We'll see what they end up doing this this play right here, but you would expect a lot more passing from the Bobcats, especially knowing that time is out on your side. But either way, it's third and eleven, minute twenty-four remaining. Handoff is bumped. Do the Bobcats fall on it? Looks like they have. And they did. Number seventy. That might be the dagger. To close this game out, the Wildcat fans are on their feet as we take another look. The handoff was right in the arms of Tiller, but Tiller just couldn't collapse on the football. But the Wildcats did, and Matthew, that might be it. it I mean, like I said earlier, the mentality to know that you're down by so much and 
know that you have this monumentous comeback and a long third down. I mean, all it's of, a tall hill to climb. It's a tall hill to climb mentally and physically. You're exhausted, fatigued. Your offense hasn't been consistent all night. It's just just kind of the story of how the Bobcats have been. It's just very disappointing for them. However, it doesn't discredit the Wildcats' amazing performance that they have had offensively and defensively tonight. Victory formation here for Douglas. And that's going to make it second down. We're inside of a minute here. It's going to be second and 11 after the first kneel down. We might see one or two more as they just let this clock run as head coach Jacob McGee stalks his sideline knowing that he has won. Will this now be 29-0 and against teams with the color green? Well, check that. That record is 29-12. and 12. Oh, 29 and 12. 29 and 12 against green teams. My, my apologies. As the clock continues to roll. 30 seconds. And that was the it. That's all she wrote. And this game is over. The homecoming hometown fans can go home happy as the Wildcats take back the battle of FM 59. And their streak continues. They're now 16 and one in the past 17 meetings. And the 2023 remission will go to the Wildcats as they line up and meet one final time. Your final from Scarborough Stadium, the Cayuga Wildcats 48, the Crossroads Bobcats 26. Matthew, any final thoughts? I mean, the Wildcats fans are not the only one that enjoyed this game. We enjoyed this game, and any of the Antler Sports Network viewers, I'm sure they thoroughly enjoyed this game as well. Thank you for having me, Jared. It was a pleasure to be on, and I hopefully I'll be on again soon. Definitely, for sure. There's plenty more games left on the Antler Sports Network, plenty more football left to be played. Once again, your final score, Cayuga 46. Bobcats 26. We'd like to thank all of our fantastic sponsors and our, and our official partners in Scouting Report for delivering the Scouting Report Game of the Week. We'd like to thank our entire Antler Sports Network crew, including Danny Wimpy, Nathan Kinney, our own Matthew Hermans, Nick Jordan, and Justin Jackson, our executive producers, and the entire Antler Sports Network crew. This is Jared Jones saying good night from Cayuga, Texas. Once again, your final, the Wildcats 48, the Bobcats 26. See you tomorrow night for Texas high school for Texas college football presented by Yosemite Roofing. It's the Steers and the Stallions. Once again, this is Jared Jones saying so long and until tomorrow.